live now welcome everyone this is on just restart i hope all of the audio things and video things are working let me know in the comments i am joined by brandon from what about nintendo and also shifty from i am shifty should be joining us later into the discussion we have a lot of topics to cover but first i'm just gonna do a couple you know youtuber things uh for <laughs> starters um we do have a sponsor, Audible, so if you're interested in listening to a whole bunch of amazing audiobooks, by clicking the link in the description below, you can get a 30-day free trial and listen to a free audiobook of your choosing. And uh, I also hit 3,000 subscribers recently, so, I mean, woo, whatever, cool. Congratulations. Oh, thanks. Hit yeah. there before me, you jerk. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Um, but no, it's cool, it's cool to grow. I'm happy about that. I like doing this, so... I'm glad you guys are here. That's awesome. Uh, but we have topics. We have a lot of topics, nintendo e topics. So we're going to be talking a little bit about Luigi's Mansion 3 and how there's a potential release date that may have been leaked. We'll talk about that and the possibility of that. We're then going to be talking about Super Monkey Ball. There may be a Super Monkey Ball coming to the Nintendo Switch, PS4, and PC. So that's really exciting. Maybe. Probably. It's effectively... It's pretty much actually happening we're also going to get into fire emblem that's coming out really soon I believe july 26th correct so media is coming out about that and we're learning quite a few things about it and i'm actually starting to get pretty excited about it so that's good for me and uh, last week the nintendo switch Lite was revealed so that's going to be kind of like the big part of this discussion along with news on another potential revision according to a data mine and some rumors as well which also has implications for Nintendo Switch Pro. So we're gonna be talking about all that today. And then also a more correct translation came from an interview involving Masuda that has implications with the whole Pokemon Sword and Shield national dex debacle garbage controversy. <laughs> and then we're gonna be talking about a potential Earthbound remake or a canned one, a concept that could have happened mm -hmm. on the GameCube. And you know me and my Earthbound speculations. Or maybe you don't, right. if you're new here. Now, you're you going to learn that, that I like dreaming about Earthbound happening again someday. So we're going to be talking about all that tonight. So stay tuned. Sit in that chair or sit in the air or stand or sit. To whatever. Whatever you're doing, yeah. listen. It's possible if you can levitate. Um, yeah. yeah, so we got a lot of stuff to talk about. Uh, but, but first, but, 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 okay, discussion's over. We're done. Uh... <laughs> How you doing? I'm doing great. We're yeah. Ready to dive on in. Been, been good. Life's good, you know. Good. I'm hungry. I just ate. So I'm not hungry. There you go. So um, my cousin made some chicken stir fry earlier, and that was good. Uh, but besides that, I had a donut. I've had two croissants. That's it. It's not enough. That sounds like the most healthy of uh, meals. There. First of all, the stir fry has tons of vegetables and it's just right, right, chicken. Right. That, that's fine. It's just the, what's the wrong with croissants? Oh. They're delicious. And what about that that sugary glazed donut? There's nothing wrong with any of that. It's good for the no. soul. Um, yes, yes. I'm drinking water, buddy. There you go. Water. You go. It's actually Sprite. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's it's water. Um, I agree with you. Yeah, healthiness. That's yeah, it's good. But doesn't mean you can't have sweets. You just you know everything in moderation. Um, but let's uh, let's uh, let's talk about the the discussions here. We got people in the chat. Super Chris, hello there. Brandon, you're here already. Oh. Seven sixty four. Thank you. Yes, I like my sweater as well. <laughs> Vilbeard, what's up? Mandy, no invite. Oh, you want to join? Um, let me see. Let me see if I have space. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see what's going on here. Nope, that's not. That is wrong. That is wrong. Give me a second. So you can bring in Mandy Lee, please. That's not it. If you're here and you want to join, by all means join so we can have more people in the, into this discussion here but um where was i with the chat greetings to everyone mastermind hello you're at work like always what do you do do you do you are you a a murderer that's a job 
There you go. Hit yeah. Up. Super Chris, there may actually be a Super Monkey Ball coming. That That is something that I'm going to be really, really excited about. If it's happening. I'm pretty... It's, it's happening. So... The question is just when. The Podcast Dojo, hello, buddy. Solid Fox, what's up? Banjo Kazooie always makes me happy. They're beautiful. Beautiful people. So, um, I don't know. Um, there may be a couple of people joining this discussion soon, guys. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. But we're going to sort of jump into the swing of things here, right? Unless, Brandon, you have any sort of crazy announcements you want to make? No, I'm good. Okay, cool. So, um, just for the record, guys, Brandon is from What About Nintendo. The link to his channel is in the description below. So check him out. He is close to 3,000 subscribers as well. He's trying to get there before his birthday. So, yeah. Yeah. On the 31st uh, this month. That's close. 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 Very close. close. Um, even closer than the release for Luigi's Mansion 3, but not that much closer because apparently Luigi's Mansion 3 is going to be coming out on October 4th. How do we know this? Well, we don't know it because it's not confirmed by Nintendo. Take it with a grain of salt. However, someone pre-ordered Luigi's Mansion 3 not too long ago. This is coming from East Ender Era, and apparently this is through Amazon Mexico, and they got an email of the shipment date, and the shipment date is for October 4th. So, the speculation is that October 4th could be the release date for Luigi's Mansion 3. So let's let's uh, check the calendar for October 4th. What day is that? What day is it actually hit? Because if it's a Friday, I would say that's a good... Yep, it's a Friday. That's when Nintendo games usually come out nowadays. Right. So, um, I kind of buy it. I think that makes sense. We've been predicting October right. for a, a good while now. For um, it, it just makes sense. It's a spooky game. Come out in a spooky month. Right. That doesn't mean they have to, right? Like it's not right. like Resident Evil comes out every October, right? You know, right. not even, even the original Luigi's Mansion they didn't come out in October, if I remember correctly. But right. it it makes sense. And not to mention, we pretty much know almost everything's coming out up until September, right? There's not not too many games that you know like september's all covered like it has to come out afterwards and we know pokemon's right. coming out in november so you know it, it the through process of elimination october seems like a fairly safe bet mm -hmm. now with this, this amazon leak it's seeming increasingly more increasingly more likely so you know um i buy it i think this is real i think this is mm -hmm. happening it, it's a good time i think it's really likely i am kind of like oh man why is it have to be so early in october i'm not gonna have I, oh, I'll have money, but I'll, I'll just spend it on like so many games in September. I'd like mm -hmm. a little bit of a break, please. <laughs> just slamming me right again instantly in October. Just like, here's another huge game you have to buy. It's like, oh, thanks, Nintendo. Kind of put that on like the 20, somewhere in the 20s. I don't know. Come yeah. on. That would be nice. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm just happy Luigi's Mansion 3. Like, I remember last year when it was revealed, I was like, damn, this is going to be a while. But it's we're already close. Hello. We're already close. Mandy, hello, how you doing? I'm good. Cool. I didn't know you were going to actually invite me, so I was like, getting hey, ready and stuff. That, that's cool. Um, how you, what's new? Um, a lot. But nothing at all at the same time. Ah, yes. Yeah. Yes. That's... That that's good. How do you feel? Because you're just you know we're just jumping in here, guys. Mandy Lee plays. You haven't seen her before. Her channel. I haven't put it in the description, but Mandy Lee plays. You'll yeah, find her. Um, yeah. On the road to 2K. So. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. She's getting there. She's speeding through. <laughs> Check her well, out, guys. Not speeding, but I'm getting there. At a moderate pace. There yeah. you go. Hmm. So how do you feel about Luigi's Mansion 3? Do you think, I don't know if you were hearing me, but October 4th seems to be maybe the date there is a listing from Amazon suggesting that, you know, October 4th, Luigi's Mansion 3. I like it. October, spooky, Halloween. It fits. Like, there's little reason to doubt it. Like, it might not be then, but it could definitely be then. So I, I, think, that, I think it's probably happening at that time. And I'm looking forward to it. So, yeah, I, I, Luigi's Mansion 3 just looks, just looks great. So the sooner the better. And October, I think, is the right time. Shortly after the release of the Switch Lite and Link's Awakening. So, this is going to be good. But 
I mean, we don't. We, I mean, I guess you guys agree. Like, you're you're you're, you're not really helping this to be a long topic because we all agree. No. Oh yeah, sure. October fourth, that's happening. Yeah, it sounds good. Huh? No one to say. All right. Well, let's check in with the chat. Let's see what else, what everyone else thinks. Say hello to other people, and then we will be moving on to the next topic. If you guys have anything to say on Luigi's Mansion Three, by all means, share it with the chat. Any questions? Any points anyone wants to bring up? This is your chance. So, but where were we here? Lazy James. Hello. Computer robots, how you doing, man? Yeah, yeah, Sab was saying, sounds like a good month to release the game. We pretty much expected that. Yeah, October, it makes sense. It makes sense. Gmod, Sega did a survey months ago and took results from many. One of the questions asked was, which series would you like to return? They put Super Monkey Ball and Sonic Adventure on there. I definitely chose those. Dude, if they bring back Sonic Adventure as well, that'd be amazing. Oh man, but I, I remember Super Monkey Ball. We're gonna be getting to that show very shortly. Model 64, how you doing? Yeah, October right now. We don't really have any any slated games for for that time period from Nintendo, so that it makes sense for it to be there. Oompa Moyo, hello. All right. Oh yeah, Sabbath. Link's Awakening is definitely gonna be a great great time. But let's um. Let's let's move on with the the topics here. I, I, even though I'm, I'm very excited for Luigi's Mansion 3. We're going to be talking more about that as we'll just go on, of course. But, um... Let's talk a little bit about Super Monkey Ball. So, it's happening. Why is it happening? Um, well, there were... Initially, there were some rumors about it. Uh, what's this dude? Savvy was talking about it. But there's more than just rumors. There's actually an ESRB listing of Super Monkey Ball for Nintendo Switch... PS4 and PC, so that it's no longer just rumors. That's that's a hard right. listing for Super Monkey Ball. So that's to me that I'm yes, I love Super Monkey Ball. I played it on the GameCube. I played it on the Wii. I loved it. It's been gone for so mm -hmm. long. It feels right. I need it. Yeah, I remember playing that game on my uh, PS2 back in the day. It was great. I thought it was awesome. So I've always, always been wanting a new one. It's been like so long since we had one. So it'd be really nice if they had like a remake or a new game or whatever, because that series has been neglected hard. Yeah, for sure. Um, so what's interesting, I'm looking here on Savvy's Twitter. He's performed a lot and a lot of rumors. He got a lot of things right. Um, he's been talking about a rumor for Super Monkey Ball. And there's just a couple interesting tweets here. So first, he's saying there's there is a rumor going around right now that Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz is being revealed for the hybrid console. Not sure about other platforms. Very soon, Super Monkey Banana, Banana Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz HD. So that's the thing. Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz is, if I remember correctly, the Wii game, right? The 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 Wii game that came out then, but it's going to be an HD version of that. That's cool. I kind of want a new Monkey Ball, or if it's an HD remake, I'd prefer to one of the older ones. Mm -hmm. But if that's what's happening, I'm completely happy with this. However, the ESRB listing suggests something completely different. It does not suggest Monkey Ball Banana Blitz. It suggests maybe a new Monkey Ball game. And uh, Sabby has actually reported on this. And he said, since the recently trademarked Monkey Ball game had a, had a new name, I believe this port is likely going to be completely separate from the new Monkey Ball whenever that is revealed. So now, according to Sabby, he's thinking there might be two Monkey Ball games. I'm not sure about that. Um, yeah. A little skeptical of that. I, I'm kind of siding with that. There's just going to be a new Monkey Ball game, which is kind of what I would prefer. Mm -hmm. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, okay. I've been okay. Sorry. <laughs> How do you feel about Monkey Ball? I love Monkey Ball. That was like I spent so many hours trying to do that little mini game. I think you shoot it, and then you have to go on this island, and then you have to go in the middle. I don't know. Mm, I, I, I didn't know what you want. I spent so many hours. I got to advanced. I was good. <laughs> so, so, like, you know. I feel like I'm one of the few people that actually really enjoyed both the jumping mechanic and the bass, basses, the bosses in Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz on the Wii. Like, a lot of people said they just preferred the original gameplay style of, of the first two. Um, and while I wouldn't mind if they were just to focus on that, I also would be cool if they were to br still bring back that jumping mechanic and have bosses in a new Monkey Ball game. How do you guys feel about that? 
Well, I've I'm not, I've never played the Wii one. I've played I think one and two on the PlayStation Two, so I, I don't know. But it sounds cool. I don't see why that wouldn't. The Wii like, was so awesome though, because cool. of the motion control. Oh my gosh. Oh, you didn't like? Yeah, that's right. It was motion control. I yeah, I hope that. it's not motion control. This I time. love the motion control. You get to be in the zone. Oh, you liked it? I, yeah. I kind of. I don't know how it works, but I can imagine it being really Looks like not good. The, the HD Rumble. Oh man. Dude, I'm yo. Mad. Because the thing is, like, one, they can still do the analog sticks and have precision control, but they can also have the gyro mm -hmm. mode, right? So they can do both. And with HD Rumble, that's a great point, Mandy. Like, they could. You can feel the ball grind because you know when you when you go really fast in monkey ball you're angling really far down you see the sparks like mm -hmm. the hd rumble could really sell that that spark that grinding like oh oh dude they could really help to like sell that that acceleration you get in monkey ball oh my god i need this now i need <laughs> this now um uh, it won't be like a new game so i don't mm, see why it would take long well the the ESR, ESRB listing actually suggested it might be. Yeah. I'd take the other one. Yeah. Uh, let me let me pull it up right now. It's not loading. Yeah, there's a name for it. Okay. So the English translated name through Google Translate, by the way. So you know, take it that grain of salt. But the the translated name for this new ESRB listing for a Monkey Ball game is Super Monkey Ball Now Good Taste. So that's an awkward naming. But I feel like it implies new Monkey Ball game, not just the banana a banana blitz port. Uh, so taste. I guess I don't know a new taste. I... Oh, I'd be so pissed if it was a spinoff where you just eat bananas. Oh my god! It's a, so it's a Cooking Mama ripoff, but it's, oh, it's Monkey just, Ball characters. The wording is such to where I could believe both remake and a new game. It's like, oh, this is a new taste of what you already know. Oh, right. It's a yeah, or, like a remix. This is a new taste because it's a new game. It's like, I think it both different. fit. It could, it could still be like a compilation um, sort of thing, right? Where it is like an HD remake, but they add new elements. They could add HD Rumble, right? They could have right. the different control styles. They could even add a little bit more content. They could do those things. So I don't. It's been so long since I've played them, I wouldn't mind a remake because it'd be like a brand new game anyways. Yeah, I don't think I have the same patience as I did, but I'll still enjoy <laughs> it. Alright, whatever right. it is, as long as it's an actual monkey ball game and it's right. well done, remake or not, I'll be happy. For sure. Yeah. Whether it's one, two, banana blitz or a new one, either either one would, would excite me. I want I a like new one because obviously it's like a bigger deal, um, but, you know, whatever it is, It'll be good. I mean, I feel like the Wii one would actually probably age well with like, like look at how like Wind Waker HD aged with its cel shaded graphics. Like, you take Banana Blitz, which had like cel shaded graphics, which I thought looked pretty good for a Wii game. You run that in, like a kind of like a Wind Waker HD kind of style engine. That game could look really good, even in this day and age. It would, right. It'd be really bright and colorful and sharp. Um, uh, I like your hoodie. You also like my hoodie. I like my hoodie. Everybody be loving his hoodie today. Dang. It, it's a good hoodie. I like your Mario Kart shirt. I'm over here with a plain ass black shirt. I'm I like loser. your black shirt. <laughs> it's very black. Yes, like my soul. Oh man. Uh, awkward. That's good. I feel you. I feel you. <laughs> the darkness. Let's see what's going on in the chat here. No love for Jet Set Radio. Um, Never played that game. Jet yeah. Set Radio. Yeah, Jet Set Radio would be interesting to see, Mastermind. Um, I don't know if we'll get one anytime soon, though. Or Skies, Skies of Arcadia. Those are, you know, we're bringing back some, some classic games here. So, Sam, you haven't played Monkey Ball since GameCube? There was one for 3DS, though. It was. I never, it was. I, it was one for the Game Boy Advance. Is this you could play it on the 3DS? That's how I remember mm, that I played. Maybe that's what it was. There was, there was at least one Monkey Ball game that was. I don't know if it was for 3DS actually. But it was maybe DS. Pretty sure it was Game Boy Advance. Let me see. Okay. There might be both. Just wait till they port to Super, like yeah. Super Monkey version. Ball Touch and Roll was for the DS. 
But there may have been a Game Boy Advance game as well. I don't know. I only played the GameCube and Wii ones. Yeah, I only played the PS2 ones, which I guess are the GameCube ones. There was also a Monkey Ball for Game Boy Advance. What about 3D? I don't. I don't think there was one for 3DS. I would have been really hyped about it. Maybe there was. You know what? I should. I should shut up because there was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I. Yeah, there was. <laughs> so there was one for Game Boy Advance, DS, and 3DS. So there you go. I didn't play any of those though. I only played. I didn't them. know any of those existed. Yeah. I guess they didn't get as much attention. I, I yeah, Master. I really want HD Rumble. I, I want that very badly. You could feel the monkey in the ball. Oh my goodness. What if you could? Like, you could feel it rattle. Oh. That could actually be a thing. What? I mean, oh man. Like, oh, 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 oh. Ah. Is that how monkey sounds? Like, maybe, oh, like, maybe like the character select screen. Like, you, you actually have to go with the Joy Cons and you, like, shake each one to feel you can feel like a kind of difference between the different characters because some of them are bigger and smaller oh man i used to play as the baby or the the girl i don't remember any of their names i don't remember any of the characters <laughs> yeah there's the baby and the girl and there is the bigger gruntier one and then of course there's i i so uh what if what if what if i i is in smash oh god no oh, okay no. Yeah, I no. hope not. I feel like no. his moveset would be very basic. It'd be, it would be Pac-Man and Sonic combined. Maybe. Maybe. Let's go on here. More Marth clones. That That's always something to be appreciated, Solid Fox. Oompa Moyo, okay. I am actually excited for Rapture Chain. Brandon doesn't oh, care yeah. for it. Mandy is indifferent. Oh. I'm just, I don't know how they feel about that's it. Nice. How do you I'm guys feel excited. about Rapture Chain? I'm like, excited. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be amazing. I think it Something might. Like it, it, it could be a sleeper. The gameplay? Well, it reminds me of Nier Automata, and since I love that game so much, I'm like, I'm feeling this mm -hmm. one. Yeah, because yeah. the uh, director of that game is working on it. Oh, and Platinum Games, I'm like, they make yeah. good Platinum games. games is, they, they pretty much always do a good job. Yeah. Yeah. Sega's, Sega's uh, you know, they might steal my heart here with uh, this uh, monkey ball game though someone just shifted right in shifted Ooh. right in a yes. wild shifty has appeared <laughs> yeah <laughs> what's up oh. everyone good we're talking about monkey ball i just went in out of nowhere <laughs> <laughs> uh well i know next to nothing about monkey ball so you know what? i'm gonna let you guys handle that <laughs> oh we want the HD rumble so we can feel the monkey in the ball. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I'm feeling pretty good about this. Yeah, there was just an ESRB listing, and it, I mean, which effectively confirms that there is a monkey ball coming somewhere. Uh, so hopefully it comes to the States and it's on Switch, which is what the ESRB listing says. So yeah, it also matches up with, with some rumors as well. I'm excited about it, and I love that it may have HD rumble. Mandy, I, I hope that happens. I, I'm glad you brought that up because now I'm like super excited about it. Like when I'm, I know it's really simple, but in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, whenever I drift, I feel the grinding. That's one of my favorite things about the, the Deluxe of Mario Kart is the HD Rumble. It feels so much better. I would love it to just grind around in Monkey Ball, just feeling the, the Joy-Cons rumble everywhere or on the Pro Controller. I'll still feel the, the HD rumbliness, which mm -hmm. I would, I would, I would really, really want. Uh, but I feel like, you know, there's not really much else to cover here. We want Monkey Ball. It could have HD Rumble, hopefully. We're not sure if it's going to be a port or not, or an HD remaster, but regardless, we're happy about it. So, Shifty, I know you have nothing to say on that, but since you weren't here earlier, how do you feel about Luigi's Mansion coming out October 4th? Because there's an Amazon Mexico listing for it to be on October 4th. I'd be cool with that because I don't really remember. Is there is there anything else coming out around nope, that time? Not really. Nothing that we nothing confirmed for from Nintendo at least. Yeah, then I'd say that's perfect because the only time I ever have a problem with release dates if it just happens to come out the exact same day as something else. Yeah, yeah. No, I think it fits fairly well. Cool. So we're all on the same page. 
But now let's talk a little bit about Fire Emblem before we jump into the main topic, which is going to be about the Switch Lite and other Switch new and Pro and all of that. But first, Fire Emblem. So Fire Emblem's coming out really, really soon. Fire Emblem Three I'm Houses. So excited. I wasn't that excited until recently. Now I'm seeing more about the game. I'm seeing that the game is going to have tons and tons of content. There's a lot to do in between fights. You know, this whole premise of like, you know, talk to these different characters, all these different interpersonal relationships, trying to get them to be a part of your your force, right? And training them, teaching them, being a teacher at the same time. But then there's these boss fights as well. And you can explore the environment with a camera. Like there's a lot to this game and it's really starting to sell me right now like the initial trailers didn't excite me too much but now that i'm seeing the actual elements of the game huh this is looking pretty good <laughs> i didn't even need to see all of that i'm hyped because i'm a fire emblem fan so well that, that's the thing for me i haven't played fire emblem in years i did not get on the 3ds hype train i wanted to i just never got around to it get so to it. you could beat it until three houses. I, I'm, I'm getting, I'm just gonna wait for three houses. You got, what, you got two weeks, fam? You got this? Go ahead, yeah, we're beat, beat every single 3DS game. Like, there's like, what, five of them? Uh, yeah. no. Awakening, you could beat. Like, you could beat. I could beat Awakening, that's true. I'm working on Mario Maker, though. I spent an entire week on one level. Making oh, it or playing oh, yeah. it? Playing it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> making it. Oh no, that's gonna be my magnum opus. It's gonna, it's gonna, <laughs> guys. I've, I've, I'll disappear for like six months. And you guys will be like, oh, he, he must have disappeared or something. It's like, I come out, guys, and work on this Mario Maker level for six <laughs> months. This is going to be my greatest achievement. <laughs> yeah. Well, I got some levels I need to send your way, fam. Oh boy, I still haven't yeah. streamed it yet. I, I haven't done any like levels that people have challenged me with. Oh. Oh, I no. do recorded levels because it will get kind of boring watching me die over and over and over again. So, you know, I cut that all out. Trim the fat. Love there you the go. Stuff. There you I, go. I, I did have a stream where I was playing some guy's level for most of it. And when I finally beat it, I just threw my pro controller on the couch by him like, yes! <laughs> just out of <laughs> extreme hype, out of finally doing it. <laughs> Oh yeah, you get this sense of accomplishment when you see that course clear. It's like, damn. You guys have more patience than me. I stream for like two hours. I go through like 20 levels, beat like three of them. That's just, that's how my experience goes. Uh, so I, I spend a max 15 to 30 minutes on a level. I'm just like, I'm done. Mm. I fear that my experience, Brandon, will be similar to yours if I stream the game and people watch me like, hey, try my level. Huh, can't beat this one, pass. Huh, can't beat this one, pass. And then that'll be <laughs> two hours. <laughs> so that's my fear. Um, but I did beat um, Andre Seeger's level from Game um, Explain. I refuse. Yeah. Have you guys I tried that? I might actually die. I haven't tried that yet. I'm saving it for our next video. I haven't tried it, but I, I have noticed that every time someone beats it, he retweets it. <laughs> he did. I said I, I I added my mine to him, but I made a video about it because I made like a tips video. So, but um, it was tough. It was tough. It took me a while, but I think I learned the game. I got a better handle of the mechanics of of that X style a lot better. Like I did not know, I did not understand the value of the spin, the midair spin. Like, it, it really, once you get a, you have to, like, learn the value of that to beat this level. Like, it adds so much lateral movement, but knowing when to do it and how to do it, it, it changed everything. Because there are certain parts of that level that I didn't think were possible. I mean, I knew it had to be possible, but I didn't feel like it was possible. Like, how can I get up this, right? And I realized that, oh, I have to run jump, jump at the very last moment before getting sliced in half by that gear, and then... Instead of just jumping towards the wall, I have to spin at the peak of my jump to extend my lateral movement so I have a higher reaching point for the wall jump, jump again at the peak of that jump, then do a little, another midair spin to, you know, continue my lateral movement, and then wall jump again, and then I can make it. Like, you know, learning that was cool, but it took a while. And that I loved it. That sounds about right, yeah. That's typically how it works. You just die play. over and over until you finally get it. I need to play his level. Yeah, it's, it's a good Hopefully experience. Hopefully I'll press record, because last time I did a whole level without recording it, because I didn't press record. I was so pissed. 
Yeah, oh, see, nice. I, I streamed the game for two hours and my soul is actually dead and it's just gone. I have no emotions. I don't understand how you guys can pour your hearts and souls into a single level and okay. actually beat it. I spent a really long time on, on the on Andre Seeger's level. A really long, like that's all I played for like days. <laughs> days, oh my. I mean like, okay, when I say days, I mean I play it like 10, 20 minute spurts like I probably put in like 30 minutes like for three days, you know, like because I, I, I haven't been able to like just sit down for hours and play, right? Um, so it's not like, oh my god, he spent 20 hours on one level, but <laughs> I definitely spent like maybe three hours, you know? It took a while. It was not easy. Mm -hmm. But I enjoyed it. For me, like it's just fun to like master a level when you have to learn, when it's about platforming. When it's purely about platforming, not some puzzle garbage. I, I like the puzzle garbage, but that's a different experience, right? Like, when it's like the platforming challenge and just kind of learning the level, getting a better handle on the mechanics of jumping and when to move and wall jump and all that right. other jazz, like, I love that, right? Like, you, I mean, Brandon, I've talked about it with you, like, with Mario Odyssey, like, I did a whole bunch of crazy stuff in Mario Odyssey, just figuring out ways to get further with the jumps, right? And breaking through the boundaries and all that other stuff. Like, I love, I love Mario platforming. Like, that's my, that's my jam. So, you know, for me... I, I, I love that about Mario Maker. It's one of my favorite things about it. I wonder what other level I'm going to try now that's going to probably I'm gonna spend like crazy. six hours on, you know. <laughs> yeah, people are crazy, myself included. Um, like they're like master geniuses. <laughs> Guys, how do you think of these crazy levels? I do not. I, I can't. I can't make them. No. I, for me, like if I make something crazy, like I'll just tell myself, no, that's not possible. And I'll give up before I figure it out. So, you know, I can make maybe like more puzzle oriented ones that like I can like, you know, I'll know it. But the platforming ones, those are really hard because they have to beat it, yeah. too. You know, and then you don't know if you can if you make something really mm -hmm. hard. And if you don't know that it can be beaten, how much harder are you going to try to beat it if you're not even sure it's possible? You know, at least when you play a level on online that's already been uploaded, you know that it is beatable. Right? So right. At, at least when you know it's possible, you might be more willing to give it a try. But if you're making one of those hard levels, you're not even sure yet. <laughs> right. You have to beat it. Yeah. So you got to be really, really talented, I think, to come up with those levels. So that's crazy. But I realized something, guys. We're talking about Mario Maker. This is the Fire Emblem topic. <laughs> <laughs> well, all I can say is I'm excited. Yeah. I just want the game. Yeah, no. Um... Team Blue people. I've decided right. which house I want. I, I don't know either, really. <laughs> I don't know. I'll figure that out when it when it happens. But I now know I'm gonna for sure get the game. Like I wasn't I wasn't sure yet. Like I, I was fairly hyped for the game because it's Fire Emblem and it was gonna be on Switch. It's a big deal. But now that I'm seeing all these different things about it, I'm like, okay, I want this. I'm gonna waste my life on this. Awakening. I should have. I, I really should have. But time, money, life. I don't know what's going on. I was like, what, like six years ago? I have no idea what happened then, but it was... I just... I, I, I didn't. I should have, but I didn't. But I will not make the same mistake this time. I'm jumping on the three houses bandwagon. Alright. And to, for sure, there I'll definitely have permadeath like, available. Like, that That needs to be a thing. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in casual mode. That does not exist. No, no, you gotta go with the casual. You just started. Don't put... Don't do that. No, even oh, if you just started, no. don't casual. I, I, I played Fire Emblem. No. Played he has Fire... pride, Mandy. He has pride. He needs to prove to himself he can do it. I'm gonna pretend it's like. Waifu dies? I'm gonna lie. I'm gonna pretend it's like Attack on Titan. Like, everyone dies. So, you know, we're getting fun. Everybody dies. Everyone so dies. I'll just think it's cooler. It's like, oh, you dead. Yeah, but, like, you're gonna turn up to the end boss with, like, one person. <laughs> we'll figure it out. I'll recruit more noobs. That's what they do in Attack on Titan. It's like, oh, everyone's dead. All right, let's get the noobs. You don't know how Fire Emblem works. It changes the whole dynamic. First of all, I played Fire Emblem on the Game Boy. So, the Game Boy. I'm not a, I'm not a super noob. I remember. The recent Fire Emblem games. I haven't played the recent ones, no. All I'm saying is maybe you should turn, maybe casual but hard. No. But no, you can always change death, it. Death, in real life, death happens. Why it's and my game happens too. So I'm definitely I'm I'm going all in. Maybe I won't play like hard. I don't know if there's like permadeath mode and ultra very hard. Maybe I'll just do like challenge 
ending level or something. But I'm definitely yeah. not permadeath on. That just, to me, that's a big part of what Fire Emblem is. His wife is gonna die. I'm <laughs> gonna cry on Twitter. <laughs> John Dyer! The, the entire Whatever. podcast after that is just about his wife. <laughs> I'll put that as a background. In, in memoriam. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I'm just checking with the chat here. Where, are, where am I with the chat? Hello there, Yellow Kazoo. Thank you for the 3K, congratulations. Uh, if you're speaking about me being well-spoken, that, that half the time I am. The other half, I'm, I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I really don't. I, I confuse myself. Lady James is actually relating to my Mario Maker troubles. He's saying, yeah, I've never played the Marios with the mid spin, so I had to get used to it. Tell you, man, it's a really... The mechanic is it, it's bigger than it... It's more important than it, than, than it seems. Like, there's some... You may not realize how much further you can jump with the mid spin until you're forced to figure it out. It pushes you beyond your limits. Yeah, it does. Paradox Wreck, hello there. Computer Robots is adding, me and Brandon saying are going to buy a Nintendo Switch Lite, aren't they? I might. <laughs> I might. Uh, if I, I had infinite it. money, I would. <laughs> me. I mean, if you had infinite money, color. you'd have no reason to never not I'd buy any color. I'd have a Joy-Con. <laughs> My Joy-Cons wouldn't be broken. But they are. I want I want... If you had infinite money, like, there's, there's never, like, you have no good reason not to buy anything at that point. Shut up, Shifty, stop there's, using logic. There's this thing, there's this thing <laughs> called space. This thing called space. Backwater. I mean, yeah, I'll buy them in qu large oh, quantity. I, them not, in I, don't, I do not think I'd support Gamer Girl Water. I would not buy that. It's just a waste no. of space. I'd rather buy beach water. <laughs> oh, you, why, why do that when you can get Gamer Girl beach water? Yeah, get holy water. <laughs> because that would probably require doing something illegal, Shifty. You'd have to go to where the, the beach... And, okay. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Yes, Paradox Rec. I, I I do watch Hero Academia. I'm, I'm looking forward to the next season. Uh, I'm pretty yeah. excited about it. I'm sad it's, we have to wait until October for it, though. So long. And Attack on Titan on, after the last season, I'm honestly thinking it might be... <laughs> it's, it gets it's... really... I, I'm, I read the manga. I won't spoil anything for you, but... Oh. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> on the chocolate block, right? <laughs> uh, okay, all right. Oh, no. uh, we're good. We're good. We don't need to hear anymore. I have not read the manga. That's it. That's it. All right. I get it. Wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I I I, the, I understand that Attack on Titan is the Game of Thrones anime, basically. You know. For real. Nobody except... has like a second to breathe. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh man. Solid Fox is saying, as long as my Switch works, I will not buy. I won't buy a Switch Lite. Mm. Right. Yeah, I mean it's fair. fair like if, if you have a Switch already, it's fair enough. So I mean, this is a pretty good transitional point to the Switch Lite. But is there anything else you guys want to say on Fire Emblem besides it being awesome? I guess I could plug the video I'm making that's going to be tomorrow. So stay stay tuned. Might as well. Oh. <laughs> plug away. Oh, is that, is that it? Well, that was it. I, it's, <laughs> that was it. That was okay. the plug. Okay. It's coming tomorrow. Uh, Stay tuned. Uh, one thing I'll just say um, is that looking at Fire Emblem Three Houses and seeing how it's transitioned, because it's been a handheld franchise for a while lately, right? And seeing how that team has handled that, and then looking at how Game Freak is handling Pokemon, I think it's interesting to compare the two graphically. I'm actually going to kind of work it on that. take so. notes. Yeah. Well, we freaks should take notes. I actually, well, just wait until I come up with a comparison video. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll wait, but um, I did a little bit change my stance on Pokemon Sword and Shield. Yeah. Because of recent news of the Pokemon. Uh, we're yeah, we're gonna talk about the uh, recent translation, uh, but if you want to share your thoughts now, go ahead. Well, no, like you know, I'm not as hard on them because. Well, I don't know if the source is correct, but what the source said was like they had to redesign the models again, and that's kind of a big pill to swallow. <laughs> so like, uh, I, I'm not as critical, but I am still like kind of 
pissed, but not as pissed. Okay. I mean, I'd say it's probably fair to be disappointed, but I guess you're maybe coming from a place where you understand it a little bit more, or? Yeah, like, it is what it is at the end of the day. So, I brought up the whole comparison of Fire how Fire Emblem transitioned, you know, it's transitioning from portable to console, and how Pokemon tr transitioned from portable to console. And you look at the graphics for both of these games, they don't really measure up to like a AAA effort. So when I see these graphical comparisons to open world AAA games that have been on consoles for a while already, I don't think like it's a fair comparison. Comparing Pokemon Sword and Shield to Fire Emblem Three Houses, I do think it's a fair comparison because both franchises have been developed for years on handheld on the 3DS and now they're both moving over to Switch, right? So they're kind of on a similar sort of development path, right? So. When you look at those games and how they've progressed, I feel like it's a big jump, but people are having really high expectations for them because it's on a home console now, right? So people are expecting Breath of the Wild level sort of graphics and it's not really measuring up to that. So I think that's part of the disappointment, not to mention the National Dex thing, which kind of set all of this into motion, like obviously. But then there's a whole other element of the battle animations, which I do agree when I saw the very first trailer in February, even though I was screaming out of my mind, I did have a moment where I was like, oh, the battle animations look not that much better than Sun and Moon. Like, I did note that. I'm still excited for the game, but I did note that. But I think the thing about Game Freak, though, is that they've never made big jumps. So my, my thing is that I think it's fair to have criticisms, right? But... I think the thing that kind of bothers me though is that it feels like the controversy for Sword Shield now, like the hate it's getting is disproportionate to what other games have gotten, even though Game Freak has kind of always had minor jumps and compared to previous games, I would say this is like the biggest jump they've had. So that's kind of my thing. I just feel like people are complaining unfairly about this. I agree there should be criticism, but I just think it's a bit too harsh. Can I say something? Go ahead. No, you're not allowed. You have no freedom uh, here. Like, I wouldn't mind if the battle animations weren't flashy or anything, or the Demex mechanic or whatever. Like, I don't want to throw a big Pokeball. I just need, like, the core mechanics there. And part of that was the Pokemon, the national decks. I didn't really need the Pokemon roaming around or anything. They could have decorated something else. I don't know. But... I feel like might as well just make this the Pokemon topic because we've been talking about it already. <laughs> so I just... like, go on. Should... Hmm? No, just go on. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Well, I was just saying maybe they should like go to the roots, not the roots, but like, um, I heard a lot of people don't really care for flashy animations as long as there's some substance to there. So it just kind of feels barren. Now, some of the criticism is kind of harsh, yeah, but some of it's needed. You need criticism to grow. That's just not the way it is. And they need to make that jump. They should have made it when they were going to, uh, like, the console fan base or platform. They should have made that big jump. Yeah, well, it would be as gracious, but... <laughs> They kind of missed a lot and missed the mark on a lot of things. So one interesting thing that I want to point out is that whenever you look at like each generation for Pokemon on a particular console, the second generation on that console, it's a sizable jump from the first one. So look at X and Y compared to Sun and Moon. Like it made some strides and that was all in the 3DS. So we're looking at the first main entry for Pokemon, right? In terms of the new generation on the Switch now, right? Three years from now, we're gonna get another new generation for Pokemon, and it's gonna be an even bigger jump on the same console, right? So I'm just saying, like, Game Freak, it, they take marginal steps game by game, and I think it's probably part of the reason why people are complaining. So I'm just saying three years from now, like, whatever jump we're seeing now, it's gonna be an even bigger jump for the next one. And that's something that I don't think not everyone's taking into account. But you I, know, they shouldn't have made a new like roster of Pokemon if they can't even handle the Pokemon they already have. I, I think it would have been a bigger deal to not have any new Pokemon than it would be to bring back old Pokemon that you can already play for like who knows, like for like twenty years. 
Yeah, yeah. I kind of see your point, Brandon, there. I might, I might side with that. So let me read the translation, because there is a lot of debate about this translation here. So I'm just going to read it out. Um, so the question was, considering the quality of graphics in the Pokemon Sword and Shield, it certainly would require considerable time to do that kind of work for every Pokemon. Masuda responds, this is a translation not done by Google Translate, but by professional translators, English people, like, not English people, people who speak English and Japanese and are trained for this, it's their job. Anyway, Masuda, I was personally sad about this decision. Of course, had it been feasible, I would have liked to make it possible to bring every Pokemon to the game, however, this was a choice we needed to make sooner or later. In the end, we had to choose quality. Omori, Masuda and I discussed this issue a great deal. Even for Pokemon Sun and Moon, it was quite a difficult situation to make it possible to bring every Pokemon to the game. Now that we are moving to the Nintendo Switch and remaking the models from scratch, we had to make some kind of choice. That said, despite the limitation on the Pokemon that can be brought into the game, the game's wild areas, story, and other content is quite rich. I believe that players will understand that when they play the game. So what they're saying has basically been my stance this whole time, but I don't think people knew that they were remaking models from scratch. And according to this translation, it is not Google Translate, but an actual company that does official translations, they are saying they remade the models from scratch. They could have hired more people. Yeah, that's kind of like... It always comes back to they could have done something. <laughs> yeah. It, unfortunately, like, for what they have now, anyways... I mean, the only thing that really bothered me was the whole National Dex thing. I don't like, like, obviously, like, you know, everyone kind of agrees like that's a little disappointing, but I mean, if the reasons are there, I get it. It's just, it's, I mean, you can't really fault someone for feeling disappointed about something, even if, you know, they had, even if it was like really difficult for them to be able to do that. But at the same time, I also, I'm someone who don't really care too much about reused animations because I play a lot of games that reuse animations and that's just kind of it's part common. of the course. Yeah, it's part for the course. Like, especially if they're coming out with a game almost every year, that's what they do. Like, it's, they're going to reuse stuff, recycle things, and build upon it. They're always building upon the previous game. That's what they've been doing. That's what enables them to come out with a game almost every year. Now, I, I guess... When you want to argue, oh, they should have hired more people. They should have had a higher, a bigger budget. I I understand that to a degree, right? But there are, there is a point where you have to draw the line, right? Like you can't just have an unlimited budget and unlimited staff for any game. Like that's not how you know, that's not how it works. There is a limit. Um, so I'm not saying maybe the, that limit could be higher for Game Freak, but I'm just saying there is a limit. So I just. <coughs> You know, when they say that they made these decisions because they wanted to focus on quality, on the quality of the game to create a, a an enriching gameplay experience, that's what I'm for, right? I'm not into the fluff. I'm into what's actually going to be fun about the game. And that, to me, seems like what they're focusing on. So for me, hey, you know what? Sacrifices have to be made, in, made for every single game that's, that's being developed for, right? Like... Not every feature that's planned for any game in existence materializes. There's there's no game that's ever been developed that has had every single feature put in. There's always something cut. They just don't talk about it because it was cut. So, you know, every game has some limitation in terms of budget and staff. Like, there's you have to draw the line somewhere. And I guess people don't like that they drew the line with this, but... Because it's the Pokemon they drew the line on, and that's like... I don't, I would also, you had like one job, man. I, I, would, I would also argue that, yes, you are right to an extent where you have to draw the line somewhere where when it comes to like budgeting and like people you hire and whatnot. But there, we, we acknowledge like they're, they're already small as it is. Like we acknowledge that even for a uh, game of this size, of this caliber, their team is already really small. So, and divided. Yeah, and divided as well. So the line that they drew was already pretty early <laughs> into the, you know, in the grand scheme of things, I guess you could call it. Right, and I, I say this boils down to expectations. Um, because on handheld, this wasn't a problem, right? But now that it's on the Switch, everyone has much higher expectations for the game. Um, so Game Freak is trying to match those expectations in a lot of ways. But in order to do that, they have to make some concessions. 
The natural dex was a concession. More powerful, so you would guess that with the more powerful console, you get more stuff, like more higher quality. Well, um, yeah, the, the Switch is capable of more, but what I mean is, is that because of that, there's that expectation the game should be bigger and better, right? And But that still takes more work to develop bigger worlds with more going on, more to do with different, different elements to it. That takes more work. So, you know, Game Freak is doing those things to sort of match that expectation, you know, to have an open world environment, controllable camera, things of that nature that haven't been done before in a Pokemon game. That is a big step for them. So, for me, I understand it, I'm okay with it, but I also understand that there are people out there that don't care about the changes, don't care about improvements in that way, they just want the same Pokemon game, just with an HD with all of the Pokemon in it. Um, I think that's the problem, that a lot of topics, that's kind of like the problem, where people bring up, like, oh, but they won't, they don't probably care, they won't probably care. Chances are they don't know the wiser. It's been... Like, Sun and Moon was years, so of course the console Pokemon games gonna have new fans, whatever, and of course people are gonna buy it, but just because people might not mind it doesn't mean it's not a problem. Because it's a problem to somebody else, or it just... Yeah. It lo like, with Pokemon, the whole thing is, you were saying how they were trying to meet expectations and all that. But the thing is, Game Freak is doing multiple games when they shouldn't be. They're a very small studio when they don't have to be. They have very, like, they have backing from a lot of, you know, companies where they have funding. Why is it that it's the Pokemon game is so kind of, it, it's missing something. It, it feels like a, you know, copy paste kind of mm. dynamic going there. Well, it might change like a different feature, like the Dynamax, but it, it feels kind of, I don't know. Ever since Sun and Moon, I feel like Pokemon games are just like, why? <laughs> I mean, I, I've said this before, I'll say it again. I think that Game Freak is doing way more for Pokemon Sword and Shield than they've done for any previous Pokemon game to me it seems clear that they are putting more work into this game than any oh, previous no. Pokemon game. I feel like they're so, maybe putting in work, but not passion, nor anything else, because that game, from what I've been seeing, looks very... playing it safe. I, I think the opposite. It, it, it feels like, like the, the opposite. Camera, that, you know, me, it's the, the opposite. camera can move doesn't mean it does, it's this revolutionary thing. <laughs> that's you, kind of what to I mean, expect they're ha having raid battles there is an open world environment there is a lot more going on with the characters it seems in terms of th there's a lot more cutscenes. <clears throat> there's a lot it seems like that we this is not confirmed yet right but there's a lot of dialogues happening between the characters that might indicate voiceovers like there's so many different things i think they're doing but i mean we're not going to agree on this right like it's just not going to happen i but, mean on my end what this sounds like it sounds like that uh that Game Freak is putting in a lot of work, but what you what we look at as like a lot of work kind of depends on whether we like what they're doing with that work, right? Because uh, Andres will say, I'm sure that you know the things they're working on are things that he enjoys that he feels is making like Pokemon like so much better. Uh, and I'm sure Mandy feels the opposite. Well, like the things that they're working on is you know just not important. I. I if anything, the way I look at it, I think it's just that Pokemon, whether you like what Game Freak is doing or not, I think they are doing a lot of work. I just don't know whether or not every decision they have made is what everyone agrees to be, like, better for Pokemon overall. But that's the other thing, though, right? These developers, they're, they're designing this game, right? Fans are never always agree with every single decision a design team makes for any particular game, right? Like, for example, had the Zelda team come and told their fans, hey, there will be no traditional dungeons in this next open world Zelda game. Fans would have been pissed off if they had not seen what Breath of the Wild was, right? In fact, there are still fans that are pissed off that there weren't traditional dungeons in Breath of the Wild, right? So there's always going to be criticism. And my point is that I'm seeing a lot of things that they're trying. And I think that once the game comes out, most fans are actually going to be really happy with the product. But we don't know what the full product is yet. So... It's kind of like judging a book just by the cover. 
we don't know the full contents of, of that book yet or the full contents of this game so the stance i just want to kind of like i guess end this topic before we move on to something else is just that i think game freak is doing a lot and i think once the game comes out and we see more about it a lot more people are going to realize that mm. I, i'm on the boat of thinking that i don't think that game freak is doing like just enough i i feel is that and I, you know i've talked about it like on uh in many occasions but i do think it's more of just time limitations and them just trying to rush certain things so that way they can get it down get it done in that uh by the deadline that they have so i feel that it's not necessarily that they're being lazy or maybe they don't know or it's you know some kind of circumstance like that i think is that they're working hard it's just that with the deadlines that they have and that they have to meet uh these kind of expectations I just feel that because they have to rush on a lot of things and they have to reuse a lot of things, they're not able to get it to where it needs to be. Like, I, I think, you know, you look at uh, Final Fantasy or even Dragon Quest, the mainline titles of these games typically don't come out for a while in between each other. Pokemon does, though. Pokemon comes out almost on a yearly basis in that regard. So And every new generation is every three years. Like, they stick to that. So, the way I look at it, I think Game Freak is trying to do what they can with the time that they have. I agree with that. My own, the only difference, in my opinion, is that I think that the concessions they're making, the choices they're making, despite their limitations, they're still going to end up with a very good game that most people will be content with once the game comes out and we see its full contents. I mean, yeah, but it's content, like, kind of just what you want. <laughs> well, I think it's going to be the best Pokemon game ever. Oh, man. No. Yeah, that's, a, that's a big no. prediction there. <laughs> is it? Every Pokemon game is kind of just like eight out of ten kind of good usually can somebody throw like heart gold and soul silver at this boy <laughs> you're, you're you talking about it? my favorite pokemon game for the record. i mean i, I love the, you games know, too. the peak of it i think I pokemon sword and shield can be better than that it's in the bottom it's in the bottom man. it hasn't come out yet though we don't know that i don't know that but i i can feel it and that's what <laughs> we do youtubers kind of speculate all the time and I just feel like it's gonna be a dank Pokemon game. But if I'm wrong, I will get on here and say, you know, Andre, you were right. I'm sorry. But it's However, gonna be subjective, right? I may love it and you may hate it when it comes out too. Yeah, that, I was gonna say that too, exactly. <laughs> Cause I, I feel like, I don't think it's gonna be the the worst Pokemon game ever, <clears throat> Diamond and Pearl. I think it's gonna be considered I one think, of the best. I don't think it's gonna be one of the best either. <laughs> Not by a long shot. I'm, I, when you're missing I, half of the Pokemon, okay, no. Probably be my favorite just because I'm not a Pokemon fan. I don't care about the other half of the Pokemon. Like, screw those Pokemon. I just want the open world and that the stuff they're adding, so. See, that's the thing though. Like, Sword of Shield is probably gonna be amazing to people like you, like who's yes, just new to Pokemon. Not like the Pokemon fans who probably know the potential it could be and game free i did just i'm not a huge i'm not a huge pokemon player but i mean this is getting me back to pokemon oh, podcast dojo's here yeah, yeah. Hi. Hi. he's been Hi. here for a while he's you didn't hear all the... no i'm just the... <clears throat> no no <laughs> did you guys did you guys hear when i opened this can of beer right here no <laughs> i started drinking it and enjoying the conversations you guys were having so i should get a beer too oh, <laughs> uh, i got water here bro um, i'm working I, I work at amazon on amazon prime day i, I need a drink oh god you know? <laughs> i'm exhausted yeah. yeah and you're and you're in new york so i can imagine how crazy it is yeah <laughs> very very <laughs> so. so ray did you hear the translation that i read from masuda uh no Yo, I'll, well, I'll just go over it real quick again you don't have to go over it like that's just fine, the, right? the the bullets basically two things one um well three they didn't want to do this right but they made the choice because they were trying to prioritize quality right that's what they, they said no choice there's no quality though <laughs> oh, God. and i'll still stand by we don't know that until we play the game. <laughs> uh, the best animations like the can tell you, Pokemon, in my opinion. The but battle animations can tell you everything. The what? The battle animations. They should be freaking doing flippy flops in the air. Well, I agree like that I agree that the battle animations aren't what I wanted, but there's only so many different things that they can improve upon in one yeah, game. But... 
with quality, why are they sacrificing? Okay, if that they still look nice, they just don't look like awesome and like everything else. Then I would be like, okay, that's pretty much where all the resources went. But well, where I think Dynamax was cool. Go? I think the whole Gigantamax bunny? thing looks awesome. No, I... it, it looks awesome, but on paper, it's just some Pokemon that's huge. But they have. There's but, they, there's some attacks that look pretty cool though. Like there's some explosions I I I, I haven't. You know what I'm talking about Andres. Like if you take a look at the trailer, there's actually yeah, some like, attacks that look like, pretty good. Like Stone Surge from um um Giga Dreadnought because it's you know yeah, Gigantamax. Like that's like one part of the game. Like you could. Pretty... My thing is maybe you could Gigamax or Dynamax once, but that's one portion. The rest of the animations look. Well, I mean, you could kind of argue the same thing in a way because if you, because one of the the one of the biggest animations that everyone keeps sharing around as it's because of how terrible it is is Tail Whip. You have Tail Whip probably on one Pokemon and you keep it for like two levels it's and one you give it. It's an early on game move. But the quality, okay. Andres, the quality. Yeah, but there are thousands upon thousands upon thousands. Yeah, but that's an excuse of Pokemon to cut it. Okay, cut it, but where's the quality? Well, that's the thing. Like, when we're, well, I'm the assuming Brandon game looks better than the freaking. How many Pokemon, Pokemon does the mobile game have? Uh, also, by the way, that Pokemon mobile game Master? stole the animations from Pokemon Tournament. Yeah, that too. And the, that the, has the, some the, good animations. I'm about to. I'm about to. Hang on, I'm about to rant about that mobile game because I've seen people <laughs> mention that mobile game and it is garbage as to why people use that as evidence. <laughs> Let me, wh why? One, they are, do not have to work on anything. There, it is a Chinese mobile game that steals all of its assets from somewhere else. They took the models from Pokemon, they took the moves from Pokemon, they took everything. All they did was move some things around. Right? Yeah, That's those one. cool looking animations are from Pokemon Tournament. They're not, they didn't have to make it. They didn't have to make that at all. That's the thing. Right. Second, they don't have all the Pokemon that is required. Like, there's more work put into the Sun and Moon games in terms of animation than that game does because they actually had to make them. Yeah, but the thing <laughs> is, take that and Game Freak has access to all of that. Yeah, the but there's like... From the other stuff, they could take it and make it into something great. But, but the, like the characters in Pokemon are like, what is there, like 30 Pokemon in that game? Not even. It's like they're, they're, So you have... What, 700 more to go? Well, that's your job. Let's go. That. We're actually going to be over a thousand Pokemon with this next generation. There's all, there's also, there, there's all, there's almost a thousand Pokemon. And then you got to design div, you got to give them different designs. There's I also imagine. like hundreds you gotta of give moves, them... by the way. You know, I'm yeah. saying this like it's. Uh... It's like not their job. That's their job. No, it. We're not, it's not that it's not their job, oh, but it is. What it is is that they don't have the people, the time yeah. to do all of those like, things while using a mobile wait. game. You maybe, using? I'm sorry. <laughs> maybe maybe if you want to wait for the game to come out in five years, then yeah, they can get it done. But it's not like they can just snap their fingers and say. Oh, there's right. another point that I think should be made though. They're um, prioritizing different things. It's just I, like, who wants this Dynamax stuff? Garden? I do. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, that got that got me oh, hot. Y'all awesome. like you all get entertained too easily. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like oh, shiny big. Oh. I like JoJo's I, I, Bizarre Adventure. I, 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 I'll give you this. I'm not too crazy about Dynamax either. I'm but, crazy about Gigantamax. But okay, that, that's where the difference is kind of because I don't care about Pokemon being bigger at all. I just like the different designs, right? That that's why I like Megas. Come on, man, they're cool. So uh, <laughs> I, I don't care about super sized cream but, Pokemon. But Gigantamax, <laughs> but Gigantamax is making Pokemon like Godzilla. They have different forms, you know, you like different abilities, and a unique move for each <laughs> species that looks awesome and has actual competitive implications. No, not, to mention, fine. not to mention, fine. Not to mention, raid battles know. have a lot of boss fight um sort of like implications as well. Like you can set up barriers, they can do multiple attacks. Like they're, it's like they're gonna actually add boss fights, legitimate boss fights to Pokemon. What if they get Gigantamax actual legendaries and they finally feel like boss fights? Like totem? that's gonna be awesome. Like they beyond totem, totem. like totem was like a teaser not... for what Gigantamax could be. I don't know. Here's the like, I like, I'm here's a th here's the thing. Here's the thing, guys. I'm a simple girl. I just want normal Pokemon. 
uh, all the Pokemon and just a nice looking aesthetic. That, that's it. Here's the thing, guys. The that's game fun. hasn't come out and we don't know crap about the development. So let's just wait and see what happens. Brad, you know what, Brandon? Do you think the uh, Game Freak could have developed so many Pokemons in three years? Yeah, they hire more people. They need to add 500 people. Yeah. Oh, okay. They don't have that. Yeah. They got money. That's what they, they have. Do. But, they do. Know, but okay, but he, right. And... They have money, but I want to point something out, though. Whenever a company makes a game, it's a business investment, right? So they have to assess how much budget is worth it to create a game that will yield a certain amount of sales. So after a certain point, they have to decide, the okay. Series. The what? That's where you're going to pull all the bank, the flagship series. Right. Oh, come on. But what I'm saying, <laughs> what I'm saying is that they may, the budget they offer for that, for that game, they may not have felt like they needed to put any more to yield that much more sales. Like just from a pure like monetary business perspective, they may have felt that they put in enough. Or it's possible this controversy, right, debates like this will lead to Game Freak in the future putting more. Well, Pokemon Company helps them out. Like they'll they'll be they publish the games. They, they you know they they will offer more money. Nintendo will offer more money. But point is that the budget may end up being higher for the next Pokemon game because of all of this controversy. They that may be the money. case. It I'm may be the case. They got the money to make a Pokemon, sink it, put it back up. They they got the money for that. We just okay. we're, we're not we're not gonna agree, man. People, people do like Ja. I mean, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> like they definitely have the money. I mean, that that much is clear. I don't think a single person in this podcast will deny that Pokemon does not have the Pokemon money. Pokemon Company has the money. The, the, po- the, 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 Pokemon the, Company and Game Freak are two separate entities. That's the thing. Like, po- the the issue is whoever is in charge of deciding what the budget is, and whoever is in charge of deciding like uh, when the deadlines are, basically, you know, timing anime and Pokemon mm-hmm. cards and all that stuff around the same time. Whoever is doing that is the person we're mad at. There's I'm not, not mad, by the way. I'm not it's, mad. It's, well, it's a mad little... is a strong term, no, but you know, like, disappointed by me. I don't like. It's a millionaire company, but there's a lot of expenses. There's a lot of crap. Oh you know, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't even, know, I don't even know the economics of the Pokemon company, so I'm not gonna go it's into it. Really I don't know how much they they expend on the and the anime. I don't know how much they expend on Game Freak. I don't know how much they expend on trading cards. You know, I don't know, I don't know anything. So you can look up the sales of Pokemon Go, and that will give you a rough estimate of just how big Pokemon Go was, but just like how much kind of influence the Pokemon brand is. So I don't want to sit here and say they're going to go under if they hire more people because that's not the case. They could do more. Right, but they the point... more, but we're settling for... This is It's like... very hard when they have... When they, it's it's very hard when they have everything all lined up but my thing to is go like, with um... all their merchandise. So can I, can, I want to present an argument here. All right. Like me first. Go ahead. So Game Freak was like, this is like the most controversial contra- controversial thing that they've done. And for good reason, because people see, you know, that's not cool. They're cutting corners. That Ever since X and Y was done, you could see the, the games dwindling in quality. So it's not just about jumping a console. It's just even Sun and Moon was kind of like what, and Ultra Sun and Moon was even more what because it's like, what, what is this? Like this is not the Pokemon. It's just like. Well, I actually thought Sun and Moon was a nice jump over the X and Y. I did not buy Ultra Sun and Moon. That did not interest me. Uh, so I'll give you that. But they came out with the game every year. Like. There's been a Pokemon game every year since Sun and Moon has come out. But people always say, oh, they're too small. They make a game every year. You know that could all change. They could. The, the they issue is that they, the resources do they think it's worth it for them? Console. Will they make that much more money with the investment? Like, you know, like, are wait, they going wait. to make more money if they add That's a bigger flagship. budget? Or will they still sell 15 million every year regardless? That's their flagship series. And that's the thing people are gonna buy it anyways people like you people like uh shifty people like cabana and brandon are still gonna buy it and i'm gonna buy it too 
And we're just gonna settle for mediocre. I don't think it's gonna be mediocre. I, I didn't say it's, well, okay, maybe not mediocre, maybe just I think it's gonna be great. Great. Where does Shifty go? Not, not the best Pokemon, I can assure she you left that. In tears. I can assure you that. We'll see. I mean, that that's, we're just gonna have to wait and see. Uh, that's, we, obviously we, we have different opinions, but, you know, what happens when the game comes out, it comes out. We'll see. Shifty, you had to go away to cry. Mm, yes, this conversation <laughs> was killing me. <laughs> no. no. Not cool, not cool. We're good, though. Everything's good, guys. So, um, any final thoughts on Pokemon before we move on to talking about the Nintendo Switch Lite? Hell oh, no. Man, just one after another. <laughs> no. You give one thought, the whole thing's just going to continue for another 50 you're right, you're right. Not. Let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> um, yeah, but I, that was I think that was a pretty good discussion though definitely some interesting points Definitely the people in the chat I seemed mean, to very it seemed to have enjoyed it so that that's, I mean, that's so it is okay what happened mandy nothing <laughs> i actually didn't hear you <laughs> i know you heard me no i really didn't <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't? No, no. i said everybody against mandy oh. i'm used to it it's not you, it's just you chose this My side. <laughs> it's just your opinion. <laughs> I just like Pokemon. I just I'm honest. Right. I, I like I'm I'm excited for this game. That's just you know. But oh. I, I agree that criticism is fair. So, you know, don't stop criticizing if it's something that you think is wrong. Stand by it. But yeah. let, let let's see what's going on with the chat here. It seems people enjoy the discussion. Now it's time for the Switch Lite. Yes, Josh, we're going to talk about Switch Lite now. So, um, let's talk about it. We're talking about Switch Lite. So, I'll just briefly go over it. Nintendo Switch Lite was revealed. I think it looks cool. There's three different um, colors. There will be a Pokemon Sword and Shield version coming out in November as well. Uh, but these th first three colors will be coming out September, same day as Link's Awakening, if I think. Uh, what's the day? September 20-something. 25th? A day? A day, in, a day in September, remember. my friends. Sometime in the 20s. Maybe 23rd? It's this year, I know that. Yep. The 20th, right? Oh, that is the 20th. Okay, it's coming on You're the right. 20th. It's coming on the 20th. It's going to have a 5.5 inch screen, still 720p. The battery will be 20 to 30% better. It has a D-pad. However, it does not have detachable controllers. It cannot connect to the television. Even though it uses USB-C, it literally will not work with the dock. They changed that in the system. And there's no thingy to stand it up, but you can't connect controllers to it. But basically it's a more compact switch controller, uh, switch controller, switch system with a D-pad that can fit in your pocket better and has better battery life and because it's uh same resolution but on a smaller screen it looks a little sharper and it'll be sold for two hundred dollars and turquoise and just turquoise yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah how do you guys feel about it trash no i'm joking no no i think I, man it, i like those colors those colors look beautiful man yeah and, so and I feel that, yeah, I mean, that mustard yellow, not digging it too much. It's okay. Yeah, I, go the, on. The, the, okay. Well, the thing <laughs> is, dude, I think, well, here's the thing, man. I got to give a shout out to you guys just because you guys were, you guys called it, you you know, and you even, I Andres, and I know Brandon, I don't know Chifty because I hadn't, I, I didn't see it, but I know that for a fact, Andres came out with the name, the Switch Lite. And it just turned out to be the Switch Lite. So that was pretty cool. The fact <laughs> the fact that the fact that um the way those switch looks, I mean, it's pretty cool. I don't I don't I don't see any anything negative with it, honestly. I mean it does you're not able to dock it, which is not a good thing. But I feel like with the hundred dollar difference that you have between the actual switch and the switch light, if you really want to play on TV, just get the other switch. And that's it. I mean, there's not much to it. It's definitely not aimed for me. I already have a regular Switch. I like playing on TV, 
I like playing on the go. So it's just not for me. It's just for somebody who would like to just strictly have a handheld version of the Switch. That's all. Yeah. I actually want one. I don't know why I have the normal <laughs> Switch. It oh, goes boy. on the go, but I want a turquoise one because it's more convenient and Stop. it's less janky. Every time I pick this thing up, it's all Brandon. too jank, man. I can't <laughs> need I that. I want the yellow one. I want the blue one. I want the Pokemon one. How dare you call I, it blue. The Pokemon one. Oh, God. I want, that one looks amazing. <laughs> I want the inevitable Animal Crossing version one that will come out this March. If you didn't know it was happening, I'm telling you here. Okay, it's happening. It's gonna happen, yeah. It's happening, right? Oh, yeah, I want all of them. But that costs $800 plus tax. So... I, I like the know. turquoise. That's my favorite. And yeah. the Pokemon oh, one. Turquoise. Oh, oh, my God. It's so nice. It's just, so good. It's just the I, colors. Make your Joy-Cons turquoise, it's man. It's very attractive. Yes. Oh. need turquoise Joy-Cons, yes. It's like y'all... Google I li- over the colors. I'm like, I like the white <laughs> buns and animal sticks. <laughs> <laughs> I do. The aesthetic. aesthetic. <laughs> okay. So I think we're all in agreement that it's a cute little system. It's, it's attractive. It's cute, bro. Like, have you seen how how round it is around the corner? I like that yeah. round, it is, bro. It's so oh, round. It's, so it's, it's so round. It's smooth. White it's good buns. In the <laughs> It's a fashion statement more than it is a console. All right, let's let's let's, 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 let's shift gears here. Right, so, um, besides how attractive the system is, how how else do you guys feel about it? Like, where you know how pissed are you guys off at the fact that there's no TV functionality? Why would I be pissed though? That's not for me. Okay, Cabana, dude. Um... <laughs> You're, you're a casual, so... Oh. I'm not a casual. Oh. He, he says, like, you type for anything. I'm like, what? Like, you know, a Pokemon Sword and Shield. I don't hide for it. I don't care what happens to the Pokemon. The freaking Switch Lite. I'm gonna buy two. One turquoise and one yellow to match with my outfit. That's like, I'm not gonna buy any... I'm not buying any... I'm not buying any yeah. Switch Lights, though. I'm I'm fine with my Switch. I'm not buying any Switch Lite, but I don't feel like there's any need to complain for it. It's just another option. Right. It's just not for me. Yeah, it's it's, yeah, a, it's a good option he for. He doesn't like understand the. Oh, I totally understand. It's a great option for people who yeah, want to make money or want to play games only on the go. I know I'm stubborn. I'm a stubborn person. That's and, good. You know, I'm Hispanic, so. <laughs> <laughs> just, I think just, a lot of us are good through that one. Just don't bring out the chocolate, okay? Uh... <laughs> my mom gets to whip me with that. Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, like, I'll be real with you. I also was a little disappointed that it has no TV functionality. I agree. But I don't think it's that big of a deal because I think it is aimed at people who. It's a TDS. It's the 2DS situation all over again, right? Now, granted, the 3D thing, no one, not too many people really care too much about, right, on the 3DS, mm-hmm. but the switching mechanic on the Switch is something that people do care about, so I can see why there might be, like, a bit more controversy there. But I'll say this, man. It wasn't that long ago the new 3DS was being sold for three, for $200, okay? But my thing is, why didn't they just make an extension of the 2DS so I could play all your 2DS games that you have stacked up over there? Because they run on a completely different OS oh. and completely different engines, and they're no, not Brandon, compatible Brandon. with the hardware. Brandon, no, 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 <laughs> no. I, I mean, from a technical standpoint, that is not feasible. We, we've seen Nintendo make some wacky stuff. That's I'm, not I'm technically like. L- literally telling you, it's right, not. It's it doesn't work. I know it doesn't work. They could make a 3DS emulator, oh, but you would have to make sure every work. single game works perfectly. You'd have to optimize every single game. Yeah, it's not, it's gonna not gonna like you can game. just plug in a, a 2DS cartridge and games. it works. That's the thing. They should have went with that. I- I'm telling you, it's it doesn't killing, work. They're killing off their 3DS, 2DS family in place of a Switch that's pretty much like a 2DS. The but thing it plays is that, Switch games. Well, I mean, they're moving on. 
Yeah, that's a th like we're eventually. Moving, that... Yo, we're moving backwards. I don't know if you guys noticed, but we're moving I mean, backwards. If they, like, if they would have kept the 3DS going, that would be them moving backwards. It it's would. true. No, I love the 3DS. I it's think it's great. I think I it's great. Now for eight I think years. It's, yeah, it's but eight years old, though. You know what I also loved? My Super Nintendo back in the 90s. Yeah, we just But it's seen... back in there. Like, yeah. it's not, you know. Yeah, but it's. You have to move on. Switch. You can't have a Switch Lite. Switch, like Brandon is just trying to justify himself buying a Switch Lite. <laughs> it's the same thing. Because the, thing. First of all, there's no justification for Brandon and I wanting Switch Lights. We're just Nintendo <laughs> fanboys. Right? I, I just want it because it looks I'm good and I think it's more convenient on the go. So Brandon, that turquoise, that turquoise, oh Brandon. <laughs> it's good. I have yeah. to have. Yeah, I probably won't buy it, but I want it. I can't. <laughs> turquoise. Turquoise is nice. Bigger picture here. I'm a fangirl, but I'm those type of fangirls who want Nintendo to do something that's obviously good, not just go with the flow, whatever they say, here you go. No. So, I, I mean, you all have your opinions, but maybe you should kind of think that it's not always just yes or, oh, it's good or it's hype. Maybe but... there's something wrong. But there's nothing wrong, it's just an option. Yeah. It's, it's still selling the Switch, it's right here. I have it right here, it's still, it didn't disappear. It's still right here in my hand. I don't understand the problem. I do if think- Nintendo, If Nintendo was putting a gun in my head saying, you need to buy it, because your old Switch is not going to work anymore, then I'll be pissed. That's the next but... step, what if that happens? Well, it didn't happen with the 3DS. Until Clearly the not going to happen. This is the same thing they do with every single one of their handhelds. You can't compare, you can't compare their handhelds to the console. You this can't. is a handheld. You, it you, also is a console. Who said the 2DS games will not, with any doubt, run on a Switch Lite. So they won't. you can't compare the freaking handhelds anymore. Yeah. We're a new that's, thing that is hybrid, creepy thingy. That's so, not, that's not, that doesn't, that's technically in, in, incomparable because you could say the same thing for Game Boy games not working on the 3DS even though they're both still handhelds. They just don't work. Because they're from different generations, right? Yes, that's what I'm saying. That's why what? 2DS games running on the Switch doesn't, isn't part of, it doesn't no, matter. Wait, 3DS did Game Boy Advance and the DS and the 3DS does DS games. They've always backed their previous one. So why are you? Why is everyone making excuses now? I feel because like, well, yeah. those so games. Hold on. That's an interesting point. Those game, those systems were designed to have that backwards compatibility in mind. The Switch doesn't. Exactly, and that's a problem. Well, the Switch also is not backwards compatible with Wii U. So it's we're not just backwards focused on making a smaller portable because you know, oh my God, you have to carry an inch longer Switch. <laughs> I just. Okay. I don't get people. It's just like stupidity sometimes. <laughs> I would. I don't know. I. I think that. Oh, by the way, you guys are seeing me at my worst. So. <laughs> it just happens to be a bunch of topics that you're in the minority on. I think <laughs> that's all it is. But I mean, I the the thing with the Switch is that if you have a problem with the Switch not playing 3DS games, then it's not really a problem with. The Switch Lite, it's just you just wish that it the Switch in general was just backwards compatible. I do think that would have been a cool feature, but like Brandon was saying, like to put that additional 3DS hardware into the Switch Lite, that would have affected with the space of it, like how it fits in there and the, the heating, and that's more technology in there, that's pricing. There's all these different dog. elements that make that a they lot harder. A or, or like a little cute the dongle or something like they did with the headset also there's a whole oh, dual screen works. there's a whole dual screen element to it too actually uh, i'm yeah. telling you it's it's technically what? implausible it's technically plausible implausible it's plausible. not you don't know the, All right, the, I, well, I don't know the dual screen thing is is kind of hard to get around even if they no. were able to make it fit like, they would have to have two screens on the Switch Lite. I'm and... just tired of people talking down to me. Don't tell me I don't know. Because you don't know what I know. But I know you don't know. I'm sorry. Uh, you yeah, well, let's not be rude to each other, guys. That's not cool. Um, 
I'm but, just done. It's just like you guys talk. You guys talk. Go ahead. Do you know what I my piece about the light Pepsi Cola? <laughs> the, the the thing is, right? I need a beer. <laughs> <laughs> the, the thing is, right, like, I, I understand the frustrations, but the thing is that the Switch Lite is not going to be any different in any technical capacity from the original Switch. That's just how it is. It's just the same system. They just basically shrunk it down. That's more or less what they did and just removed a bunch of the features that would have made it the original Switch, more or less. That's all this really is. And they did that in mind to try to make it as portable and as cheap as they could get it, I would assume. So the whole thing about like getting a 3DS to be like 3DS games on it, or even Wii U, if you want to talk Wii U, but regardless of which one we're talking about, they would have to have designed it with that in mind. That's the difference, right? So that's why you don't see N64 playing Super Nintendo games or why you don't see, you know, certain systems just not playing, you know, the previous systems sometimes because they were just not designed with that in mind. Yeah, um, you know, I don't have too much of a problem with the, of there being no 3DS games on there. Again, like, they would have, like you said, shit, they would have to design it in mind. It's a lot more things. It would have been more expensive. The thing that I, I think is a valid arguing point, though, is a TV connectivity. I think a lot of people were disappointed when that happened. But I still think it's going to sell. Um, you know, that 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 is probably gonna happen it's still gonna sell switch like actually we heard like nintendo's like stock prices like went way up you know like when the switch Lite was announced like that thing is going to sell like hot pockets because it is appealing to the 2ds 3ds market that haven't gotten into the switch yet right especially with pokemon coming out the end of the year it's gonna sell uh, it's gonna make a lot of money now i I wonder why Nintendo did not put the TV functionality in there. Like, how much more expensive would it have been? I wonder if they did it for other reasons. I've heard some different theories. Um, one is that it could have impacted, like, the heating situation of the Switch Lite, right? Because when you... That's a different piece of hardware compared to the normal Switch, right? If you were to plug it into a dock, it has to overclock. It and that not have to be a dock. It could be a cable. It would still get hot, though, because it would overclock it's... to run TV well, mode. Yeah, but make, put a fan in it. They Maybe they will. Maybe there will be a specialized dock. How many could... switches are going to be revised? Like, maybe this will happen. Maybe that will happen. Like, maybe they just had a bad product. It's... It's going to sell. You don't, think, you don't think you don't think Switch Lite's going to sell? It's going to sell, of course, especially with turquoise and yellow. <laughs> grabbing people's eyes because they're so easily amused. But it's like, is it really smart no it's probably going to end up being the switch and then something better is going to be the better switch but mandy you gotta admit that 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 turquoise is pretty though it is pretty i will love turquoise on my switch but you know i look past those things so it could be a heating issue what for why the switch light does not have tv functionality right another theory Right, and this is one that I sort of thought of, is that they didn't want to devalue the regular Switch, right? Like if you watch the Switch Lite reveal trailer, they highlighted like as if it was features, hey, this Switch Lite doesn't have Joy-Cons, woo! This Switch Lite doesn't plug in television. Yeah, like, what? <laughs> Did you guys notice that? Was that, am I the only one that noticed that like they kind of advertised happily that the no, Switch yeah. Lite was lacking features? I noticed. And, I still think it seems like a good system. I think it's going to fit for... There's going to be people out there that are going to really want this. But I think they were doing that to make it very clear to not slight regular Switch owners. That, hey, don't worry. This Switch Lite is not going to be better than your regular Switch. Your regular Switch can still do all these other sorts of things. It's still worthy. It's still valuable. It's still a good system out there. And it's also why I don't think we're seeing a Switch Pro this year. Because if they were to launch a Switch Pro barely two <laughs> years into the system's life cycle... That would probably slight a lot of owners. We've never seen an enhanced piece of hardware that's like a variant of, a, of the of the base platform introduced into a console's life cycle before. PS4 Pro, three years. Xbox One X, three years. New 3DS, three years. They you wait at least three years. You can't compare it and then say you can't. You don't like how people compare it. You can't compare it to other consoles, but then compare it when it fits your thing. What are you talking about? The whole Pro thing. 
and how the Switch Pro should be three to four years or something. I think the Pro is it's not going to come out this year because the other consoles don't have, have a, a weaker version. No, so but we have. It's it's like moving forward. We're not coming back. The thing is, is that the PS4 Slim and the Xbox One S both basically either do next to nothing or slightly upgrade. The Slim. But it's the... still like an up. It's not a downgrade. Like even what Andre said. They were actively, you know, saying it's not going to have this feature, it's not going to have that feature. Well, if you count the Xbox One as all digital, then you could say that is a but downgrade. But that's appealing to somebody else, but it's not a downgrade. Okay, but well, there you go, right there, what, what you just said. I would say kind of the dis- Switch Lite is a equivalent. Yeah, of. that's the thing. Like that's it's where it's disagree- equivalent to the all digital Xbox. Well, like, no, but I'm I'm features. not saying the all digital is the same as the Switch Lite. What I'm saying is that the phrase you just used saying you know oh um you know it, it appeals to someone it's not just a downgrade that's what a lot of people feel about the switch like a lot of people feel that it's not a downgrade for them they that's feel like why, you know why are we focusing on making a smaller portable that's the whole thing that's getting me all messed up is the fact that the switch already is portable if it wasn't portable i would understand a switch like but the fact that the switch is portable and they're making another smaller portable with not even the features of the switch why are we moving up and then maybe we could make a smaller version but we have you know we're progressing to something yeah i just think nintendo's trying to get as much people to buy a switch so they can't so they made a cheaper one for younger kids or people who don't want to put as much money who don't really care about those other features the switch sells like crazy yeah and it could sell even more if it's cheaper that's what i was like why didn't they just continue the line of 2ds's maybe because they don't want to rely eventually that could be the eventual end product, something that looks like the Switch, but it's not, you know, for the console or anything. It has its own library of games or whatever, but... People want to play Switch games. They don't want to play 3DS games again. Yeah, but people want a smaller Switch, but don't want the Switch. It doesn't make sense. That's because it plays the same games. But that's the thing. Most games don't even run that great in handheld mode. I'm sorry, Brandon, Xenoblade 2, you could literally, it's fat handheld mode. It's just Z- Yeah, Xenoblade 2 is, yeah, but... Some people I mean, have argued that, some people have speculated, I should say, about whether Xenoblade will run better on the Switch Lite because of that. I it, don't know. It is um, using, I don't, I'm not saying it will. I'm just saying that that's been discussed. Um, Technically, the Switch Lite is using a new um, SOC, right, Brandon, that's using a different yeah. chip. That it is actually more efficient, but they're also, you know, they can only clock it so high on the light and they can only, and they're using a smaller battery, right? So for those different reasons, like it's not going to be more powerful in the regular Switch, even though it technically could be, but, you know, that there's all those other stipulations to keep it in mind. I just feel I like mean, could have done so much, revised the Joy-Cons, made them cheaper, freaking, um... They may, the oh, optional. the thing yeah. is, I think Nintendo are, is going to be doing other things like that. They are... We have a lot of information to suggest there's actually two more revisions maybe in the works for the Switch that are improvements. Revisions that move forward. That's what we should be doing. Well, well, the thing is, I think both are happening though, right? The light is like a lateral move, right? But the there are others that are coming that are they're up that are moving ahead like you want. Well, people were saying, oh, the Switch killed the 3DS. Now it's going to be double killed with the Switch Lite because it's. I was like, you know. The oh. DS is smaller, you can clamp, it's a more portable portable, but I don't get this whole Switch. <sighs> but the what? thing is, the 3DS is dead already, like, we're not getting any new games for, for the 3DS anyways. And a good way to revive it is to make a successor. The thing is, nobody at Nintendo wants to. How do you nobody know? wants well, to buy that. Well, here's another thing, though. It, I don't think it's a good idea... Hold on a second, let me, let me, let me say this point. So, I don't personally think it's a good idea to go back to a separate line. So one of the advantages of the Switch, right, and now that the 3DS is dead, is Nintendo, all of the games that they're making are going to one platform, right? So by having a Switch Lite, they're actually appealing to that market that doesn't want a home console, doesn't want to spend $300, it's only willing to spend 200 at the max, and yet every game that Nintendo makes works on every single system that appeals to every different audience. The console has to be tethered down to a handheld only. That makes so much sense. There's but, a reason why the 3DS was kind of 
separate from because it won't make sense to sell the same games because you have to always keep in mind is it going to run good on handheld mode is it going to do this on handheld mode only and we had that problem with the switch where some games look better on tv mode there's also a lot of games that have a much more stable frame rate in handheld mode and, and more people tend to be impressed with handheld mode with a lot of uh, big AAA games as opposed to um, docked. Yes, mode. but some games require a TV, or people like the TV. It doesn't work as good on handheld mode. They so like now, the TV if, by a switch. You can't put the handheld. You they. I just don't get how they went all out to make this hybrid thing, which is genius. I love my switch, and then go backwards just for another portable. And the 3DS is portable too. Some game. people don't care about people. playing on a console. Right. Some people just don't care. They just buy, they just extra money yeah. for them. Yeah. But the, I think what the the issue is that extra joy cons. The Do thing something. is, the I think thing we should is, move on to the next topic because we still have a few more things to talk about. But Shifty, finish your point. Well, what I was gonna say is that the thing is that. Um, the whole point about bringing up that, you know, for a lot of people, you know, when you go talk about the 3DS situation with like 3DS and 2DS, like most people kind of agree that like going from like 3DS to 2DS or like PS4 to PS4 Slim or whatever, like console going into like their next little slim models or whatever you want to call them. Uh, most of the time, like we don't really see them as a downgrade. And I guess like Mandy, you could see it as a downgrade, and if you see it as a downgrade, that's, that's perfectly fine to you, and that's it you is. know that's fair. It but is. treating it as a fact that it is is just not the case. It is. If it's, it's just not half of the features that it's, are on the main console. It's, 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 it's just sorry, not because the three D, the three D, the, then if that's the case, then the two D S is a downgrade. The two D S is a downgrade, and so is many other systems I've had. You can't compare the three D S and the Wii U, for instance. The Wii U never really yeah. had a slimmer model. Yeah, but one, you can't compare the 3DS and the Wii U. But at I'm not comparing the, the 3DS and the Wii U, I'm comparing the 3DS the, and 2DS, the day, the Switch is Switch Lite. I mean, I remember when the 2DS came out, portable. that was kind of a head scratcher. And like, also- I, I didn't like the 2DS when it came out, I thought it was dumb. Um, you know, like I just thought it was dumb, but I also acknowledge that, hey, there's probably some smaller kids out there, some families that, hey, this is a cheaper option that works for us, and they were able to get kids at 2DS. So, I mean, I'm all for personally it didn't getting out to more people. The Wii U. It didn't impact the console. It was just handheld to hand. We're having a problem where the console and the handheld are together. Now we have like 10 handhelds. The only thing is that no one at Nintendo, and I think most people just in general who own a Switch right now, are not looking back at their 3DS. So no one's looking at like, oh, we have two handhelds I'm that need to go. I'm not saying have to. I, I get that. But what I'm saying is that people want choice. And the choice in this matter is do they care enough to see the lack of a dock, to see the lack of detachable controllers as a downgrade? If you see it as a downgrade, it that's is. perfectly fine. Yeah, I'm saying if if you see it as a downgrade, that's perfectly fine. It and is. you and you you having your switch is exactly what you should have. You're and in the same in the I same agree vein. It's a downgrade, by the way. I I in, just think that's why one of the reasons why Nintendo is making two hundred dollars. It's not as good as the regular switch. It's less. Hey, good. Shifty. Yeah. Can you hear this? <laughs> that's the sound of happiness. <laughs> well, I'm glad uh, you're uh, having fun. Uh, why are I'm you afraid. even here? Uh, all I'm saying. <laughs> we just gonna drink beer. Uh, I, uh, hey, I mean that relaxes me though. All I'm yeah. saying, right, is that I agree. I don't like the Switch Lite. I don't really care for it. It's not something for me. I'm not buying it. I have no. I don't care. I like. The, I think it's you cute. Don't, you don't. Wrong, but you don't. You don't like. You don't like it, or you just don't care for it. I don't care. I okay. don't care. I have like basically little to no interest for it. And the thing is, is that. I'm, I don't have, I don't have a reason to hate it either. It's just kind of there for me. So, I, I think don't know. it's attractive, I, I, but I also it, agree with you. I, no, like, it's, I, the, it's the same thing for me though. Like, it's there. I'm not gonna buy it, but it's there. I, I think we should move on to the next topic though, guys. We still have a few more topics to talk about, and I think we'll agree, we'll be more on the same page with these next topics. So let's move on. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like everybody's just like against me with this. Well. I don't think we'll be against you on this. Uh, I don't know, actually. That, this is actually a really confusing thing. So, apparently, this is not a pro. Um, there is a new, new Nintendo Switch on the way. But there's some debate as to what exactly it will be. So let's kind of go quickly over the information, right? 
there is an FCC filing where Nintendo is not so they're not making a filing here to have a new system. They actually want to make an adjustment to a previous system. So they're not going to be branding this as a new system, yet it's going to have a change of SOC, a change of NAND memory type, NAND, and a CPU board change as well. Like it, it, It's going to be different. It's going to have an updated CPU, basically, among with other little, other little things. And what makes this is interesting, actually, we have, I have um, like specs here. Where it is. So there was a uh, there was since the recent firmware of 5.0 update, there was a data mine that has seen like different hardware lines, three different hardware lines, right? One with the original Tegra 210, which is apparently the first switch, right? Brandon, if you see any discrepancies here, point it out to me because you're my tech guy, right? But there's also um, two for the new Tegra 214, Mariko, and these two hardware lines are the Switch Lite and Switch New. That's how apparently it's it's labeled in the data mine. The original Switch has 4GB of RAM, right, and this in depth gets 6GB, but these new models have support for 4GB and 8GB, interestingly. Both the Switch Lite and the new are, are going to use LPDDR4X DRAM, which grants a small battery boost due to lower voltages. Um, that's just talking about Switch Lite. The GPU in the new Switch is clocked at higher values than the Switch Lite, potentially giving a modest performance boost. Um, and then it's also saying larger than 32 gigabytes of memory is possible in the new units, but it's not specified if it actually will have it. And none of this has anything to do with a pro. And <laughs> there's more. Uh, so there's FCC filing, there's a data mine that talks about this other version besides Lite, another revision, right? That there's Emily Rogers coming on saying that there will be another switch coming out this year. It'll come out with two colors from what she's thinking. Uh, and she, I'll just read up what oh, she's here. So, okay, so I think it's important to clarify a few things to avoid my comments getting twisted. I don't believe this will be a silent revision. This switch with enhanced components sounds like something that Nintendo will need to inform retailers and customers about. An updated CPU, extra uh, memory and storage space and stuff. That's what she's saying based off her opinion from what she's heard. But it goes against what the FCC filing is suggesting, which is something that's going to be a part of the same branding, but just basically changing the innards of the current switch. And then we have the data mine that shows an enhanced switch. So hopefully I explained that. I mean, it's kind of a summary of everything, right? There's a lot of little nitty, like a lot of little details here and there, and hopefully I can clarify more of it or Brandon. But from this, guys, what are you thinking? That apparently this is going to come out this year, this new switch. But we're not sure if it's going to be like a whole new thing or if it's just going to be like a silent change that we won't even see or, or hear about. It. We'll have to like to take like actually take newer switches that come out a couple months from now and just look at the internet to see if it's different. Bring it on, Nintendo. Bring it on. We'll see. You know, maybe maybe this if it's not the switch. Well, I mean, we have to see what it is. Right. But, you know, I guess I don't know how to react. I mean, we just had the switch light announced. If we get another switch announced again, I mean, I don't know how to react to that. But if it's if it if it gives me everything that I really want, you know, uh, then I could, I don't know, depending how it is, I could give it a shot. But I really am looking forward to the Switch Pro though. So I'm really trying to maintain myself civil and not just spend on any other Switch until we get that one. So, but we'll have we'll have to see what it is, right? Yeah, right. but what do we think it is? What 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 is it gonna be? I personally think it's just going to be the switch with different uh, sizes for instead of thirty two gigabytes, it's gonna have like sixty four, one twenty eight, and there will be two more two new models with different um, storage sizes. Is the word I was trying to uh, think of and it will be marketed as the same thing though but internally it's going to have a new obviously it's going to have that new cpu essentially all that's going to mean is it won't get as hot the battery life may be a bit different but they probably will just make the battery smaller to be honest and it will just have less issues that the current switch does like warping and things uh it's just not going to be anything that you're going to be like man i really want to trade in my current switch for this new switch unless you just really want more storage it's just gonna be things under the hood to fix all of the issues that we've been having with like our the switch. switch has had heating issues and things of that nature right, right? as and well as keeping costs down for manufacturing because right it's actually cheaper for them to use this cheaper. new soc type right 
Especially if you use the same SOC for two different systems instead of having two different lines for two different SOCs. Even though these are slightly different, they're close enough you can use them in the same uh, in the same factory essentially. Right. You manufacture them in the same place. Like you it seems like the new factories with new machines that do diff things differently. Like it seemed like the data mine suggested that basically the other uh, the switch revision or silent revision, right? Is just a it's just going to have a higher clock GPU, basically. Um, and it may have a bigger like battery, too. It may, right. like, this battery may still be about the same size as the regular Switch, but because it's more efficient, it'll be have better battery life than the regular Switch. It may be even better than the Switch Lite, which is more efficient right. like the re this new Switch, but it has a smaller battery than the regular Switch. Mm -hmm. I think at best it'll probably be about as good battery life as the Switch Lite, just because the screen will be bigger, um, which takes more battery, and it yeah, I don't know. I just don't think they're going to advertise that, really. I don't think they're going to have a separate page on their website, is what I'm saying. It's just going to be Switch 32 gigabyte model, 64 gigabyte model, 128, or whatever size they go for. It's See, not going to be like, Switch 32, new Switch on 64. And they're not going to mark it as new, right? No. Okay. It's just going to be the same Switch, but, oh, this one has different sizes of storage. So they're not going to... They're not going to market that hey this version runs better has better battery but it may end up having slightly better performance with games and slightly better battery life great i think they'll probably discontinue the original switch as well just silently um so so is it going to be like a that. like base switch is 32 gigabyte model but they're going to have a 64 gigabyte model or 120 gigabyte model mm -hmm. and i think they'll stop manufacturing the original the, this switch you, right here how much would you sell it for 349.99 uh i guess yeah you could sell for 350. i, 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 I wouldn't be surprised 400 dollars just for a bit more no. internal storage no, 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 that's not gonna, which is what they would be that much uh i assume to be honest i wouldn't be surprised if the 64 gigabyte comes out at 300 dollars even if it's the same price i also they don't I do think they might lower it their... that just feels like eh, like i'd rather just do do if, do 128. Just do 128. No, I think there will be a 128, but I think they'll come up with a 64. That's just the base replace of the Switch. Interesting. So essentially, this 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 current version of the Switch will be obsolete. It will still exist, and it will still be fine if you own it. But it's just there's going to be a better version that they sell as their normal version, slightly better. I don't know. I just I think it's going to be weird to so at this point they could cut the cost of the normal switch if they wanted to manufacturing costs are going down it's going to be cheaper to produce that system than it is the current switch um so there's no i mean unless they just want more money they can they can make it more expensive right i mean the other option is that they just change the internals don't add any more internal storage and it just they just change the internals, right. but it, it runs games basically the same, so there won't be any like complaints or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And it's just they're just doing it because it's cheaper for them to make, and it'll have less right. heating issues, and that'll be pretty much it. Mm -hmm. According to Doug Bowser, there aren't going to be any official revisions coming out this year. Right. Yeah, well, well, they, that well, they, said, revision, they said the same thing about the Switch Lite, didn't they? No, they no. just said they weren't going to show anything at E3. Yeah. Which oh, okay. Yeah. So well, he they, said no I, more I thought, revisions, but I, don't, I think he I, meant like Switch Lite and Pro. I don't I, see this as a. Revision. I thought they said they were not going to release any more Switch. They had nothing planned, though. Was that like last year or something like that? We would have to go back and pull up a quote to see exactly what the wording is. Um, but I mean, the, the point still that, stands. The, 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 the thing is, when a company tells you that it's not gonna something's not going to happen, that doesn't necessarily mean that's true. Yeah, so, right. It doesn't. It absolutely doesn't, um, but he still said it, and I think it still holds some weight. It doesn't. It. I, I'm just saying it doesn't. I agree with you that when a PR person comes out and says something, it doesn't mean it, it could be wrong or untrue or misleading, but it also doesn't mean anything. Like it means something. You know, like when they said that there wouldn't be any switch revisions at E3, I believed them. And that's what happened. Like, I would say if Doug Bother's saying there will not be any revisions coming out this year, and we're already in July, right? It's not like 
the beginning of the year, right? This is already in July. Like, we're late into the year already. We're past E3. The Switch Lite was just revealed. I think it means that there won't be any major branding changes to, like, new lines introduced this year. And I don't think that he's going to... I think that that quote is going to age well for this year. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I just don't see a 64 gigabyte or 120 gigabyte model as a new... Uh, it's not going to be a new line, so it's not technically a new revision like he's talking about. Like, they're not branding it. Like, it's not going to be a separate yeah. tab on their on their website. So it's, it's yeah. just a, a different Switch, but it's still the, it's the Switch. Right. I, I think... See, based off the SEC filing, based off the um, data mine, I would say that there will be no um, inter additional internal storage. It'll just be a soft replacement and we'll see no changes, right? But because of what Emily Rogers is saying, I feel like it kind of backs up with what you're suggesting, that there could be a couple internal storage um, updates as well. So I'm, you know, uh, something I'm, I'm a bit did... divided on whether it's going to happen or not. Right. Something I I did think is I would. It's possible that they'll they'll change out the 32 gigabyte model. Like it is a revision, but it's still 32 gigabytes, and they only have one storage difference revision to the Switch, and that would be 128. So that'd be, probably be like 25, 30 more dollars. I don't think they're going to go as high as 350. I just don't think that'd be, especially if they're going to release the Pro next year for 400. That'd just be stupid. Why am I paying 128 gigabyte version? That's of the another Switch? reason why I just I kind of don't see that right. it happening. I I think I don't. It's weird, man, because it's like it's almost like it's conflicting reports, right? The SEC filing suggests that there will be no branding change, right? right. But um, Doug Bowser is saying that there will be no revisions this year. But then Emily Rogers is coming out and saying, hey, there's gonna be two colors, <laughs> and it's gonna have more storage, more memory, and all this other stuff, like. Uh, and more power, by the way. Like, um, something that she, th and this is her opinion, but based on what she's heard, she thinks that they're going to market it, right? They're, they're not going to be silent so. about this. So, oh, I mean, the market, it's all I, conflicting it each other. Have storage, they'll market it as that, but it's not going to be marketed as more powerful or anything. I, I just feel like that'd be a bad idea. I mean, maybe it's like the Xbox One S, but technically it's more powerful, but it it's doesn't like, really matter. Oh, it runs one or two frames better. Yay. That's what I think it's going to be. It's like technically if you squint your eyes and you get real close you can see that there are two more pixels on the side of the screen over here right but, uh, right nobody's gonna be over here but like god damn it can't believe that wolfenstein youngbloods looks so much better on my on my on my news on the new switch right so mandy shifty where do you guys stand on this potential silent revision maybe not silent revision i I can't see it being anything other than a silent revision, to be honest. Mostly because I, I have a hard time seeing how they would just announce Switch Lite and also within the same year talk about a whole other model. Right. Especially, so, I mean, we're also assuming a Pro's coming out next year. They may not, if, if, if this happens, maybe there's, if, there is, if they market another enhanced Switch, right? It's only, if it's like a bare, barely enhanced Switch, but they market it, I find it highly unlikely they'll have a Switch Pro come out this year if they market it as an enhanced Switch. Yeah, that, that's why I feel it, it would probably be silent because I can't imagine having two brand new models coming out within the same year being a good idea. That just sounds like a bad idea. Sounds clogged up. Yeah, you you kind of ri you run the risk of confusing the casual player base. You kind of... I, I, don't, I don't see it because most people are going to just pick one and not the other so why not wait for the sales of one to dwindle and then release the other yeah mm -hmm. also, business, also, Nintendo like... waited so long to have to do any sort of like updates or revisions to the system so now they're coming out with Switch Lite it's like oh wait now we're gonna do Switch Lite we're gonna have two other regular Switch colors that actually run better than your previous Switch oh and by the way Switch Pro's coming out next year like it's, that's a lot of short I, I, I don't know I don't like know I feel that. like the only people who wouldn't be I don't know confused by that would be people like us or like you know right who watch this sort of thing yeah, very closely we, we knew what wii u was like yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> very like, like if you knew what the wii u was you're already too intelligent for uh too well versed in the the topic you're not to, a good uh... gauge for for what's a good business <laughs> practice 
What do you yeah. think, Shifty, about just a storage increase and just it's the same switch marketing wise, but it's it has more storage. I mean, that's fine. I don't see that being an issue mm -hmm. because that's that because as far as the the I guess the general public would look at it they would just go like oh look it's like my iphone but now it has more memory mm. like it's not like yeah maybe the internals will be slightly different yeah. and they're not gonna hear that they're just gonna see the right. bigger memory and that's all they're gonna really care I about i think they can get away with one brandon i feel like two i, I don't I just know it's think just... two is a little bit overboard it... i think they'll just have one it's like 128 maybe we'll see and they would have to market as just like more storage like not like right. say hey it's more right. powerful and it runs like they can't no, say they're not, they're not gonna say anything it's just gonna be when you go to the the nintendo switch tab on your on your nintendo website you see oh this one has 128 this one has 32 exact same specs okay mandy what do you think it's something they should have been working so i wouldn't be surprised if they have one okay all right, so um, let's check out the chat for a little bit, and then we'll get into pro discussion, and then we'll get into our, our final topic. So, um, yeah, let, let, let's see what's going on here. So, by the way, guys, if there's any like particular things you want us to, to cover or talk about, adding me makes it easier for me to see what to get to on the chat. Let me see here. Shadow of Nexus, you, you're saying you think the Switch Pro will be docked only. That is interesting. There's actually a lot of people that are sort of buying into that kind of theory because some, I see people call it the Switch Stay, right, or Switch Home, <laughs> because if Nintendo it has a regular Switch, but then they, they create a portable exclusive Switch Lite, maybe there are other ideas to have a home console exclusive Switch Home. I don't think that will happen. Um, mainly because if they have a Switch Pro or Plus, right, I think that the idea of that is to market an enhanced Switch. The Switch Lite is meant to be considered a lesser valued proposition. It's meant to be considered lesser, which is why it doesn't have those features. But a Switch Pro, right, I, I find it hard that they would just market it as a stay at home system with and missing the main feature. So I don't think that'll happen, but I do understand the philosophy with it. Mm -hmm. I, I, I kind of have to agree. I don't see. A, I mean, if they did, I would be in the same boat. I feel about the light. Where it would be just okay. That's something I'm sure caters to someone. But I don't. I like. I like. The main reason why I like my Switch so much is the hybrid nature of it. So, I, I, if they made one where you just stay at home the entire time, I, I. I and it's also kind of I feel like it goes against like the architecture of what they have going with these SOCs, right? Like they're mobile, it's mobile hardware. So why would you immobilize mobile hardware? You know, that's a little strange to me. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure how I feel about that either. No filter. Hello. Let me see what's going on. A lot, lot, lot to be said here. So. No filter in the podcast thing. I think Switch Pro is a farce. Ain't happening. They'll have a Switch 2 in three years. That may be. That may be the case. I hope not, though. <laughs> Alright, so let's talk about a Switch Pro, then. Given what we've seen with the Switch Lite, given what we're s s sort of seeing with this new Switch revision, low-key revision, how do you guys feel about Switch Pro now, moving forward? And I want to point out that the Wall Street Journal report about the two revisions, when they talked about a Switch Pro, they talked about it being a system catered to gamers, like a more expensive version of that. They weren't talking about like a soft, low-key revision. Right. What do you mean? Hold on. You know, when when you say some some of these things, you got to talk to me like I'm a five-year-old. What do you mean by a... You mean a soft key low, 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 what, what, what was it that you said, man? Okay, so the, low key revision. So this revision that we were just talking about, right? That may not even be branded as a new switch. That's what I mean by low key. Mm -hmm. Like we're not sure what this is, but it's not a pro. It's something okay, else gotcha, that gotcha, may gotcha. not even. It's basically just gonna be a normal switch. Just perhaps it runs slightly better, slightly better battery, less heating issues, and it may just be in the same kind of box. Oh, okay. 
But I just needed I just needed to understand the term. But go ahead, Shifty. Well, what I was gonna say was that if the idea of a Switch Pro, I'm for it. That's as long as it does it. You know, and I, I would imagine with the name Pro, or I mean, that would be called Pro, but. I would imagine the idea for it would be to take everything the Switch currently is and kind of just make it, just improve on it in every capacity they can. Uh, so if that's the case, then that's something I'm totally all for, which I guess kind of fits the demographic they're going for it from what it sounds like. Last processing. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we get Sega on that. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I mean... But that could be my first monkey ball. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like it would have to be everything I already like of the Switch, but just improved. Maybe better screen, maybe a better battery. Maybe I mean, I'm, Switch Lite already has that, but I mean, let's get a battery that's better than 30 minutes more. <laughs> and, uh, you know, just generally improve the hardware. I, I don't know what exactly to expect because I'm not a, a huge tech person. I would just hope that it's everything I like of the current Switch, but better, like the Ferrari of Switches. <laughs> nice. I think yeah. it'll be. I think I will expect the same thing. I will expect them to have the 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 current model they have, but just improve on it. You know what I mean? Improve it in every aspect. That's why I don't really agree with the fact that some people are saying that it just may be a home Switch. You know, where you can just play at home. It just has to be, you know, an upgrade to what we have already. And I'm saying in every aspect, like go all out, you know, not just make it for for you to be able to play it only in one way, but to play it how you do now, but with much more improvements. That's so what I think. one improvement that I really want to see, and it's not something that I would, it's that if I ever, if I, whenever I make a predictions video for it, I'll bring it up because it's something I want and I, I hope and I think it's possible, but I don't think it's like super likely is 4k upscaling like that's something i really want like if i'm gonna pay 400 dollars, i want this switch to upscale its games to 4k now just mm -hmm. to be clear right for upscaling is not the same as running natively it's a big difference you know like it would maybe like for example this switch plus comes out and it's maybe close to like xbox one level right but it has a dock with an additional gpu in it that allows it to upscale games into 4K. And that's really all it does. It, it upscales games to 4K, it has an ethernet port so you can have you know faster speed internet, internet speeds and also maybe do cloud gaming and things like that. And that would be something really cool that I think would add a lot of value to the system. On top of the system, just having a better SOC in there so it could have better battery life. And maybe, I mean, if it's a 1080p screen, that would be amazing too. Also, D-pad. We, we gotta get that D-pad. No sliders? <laughs> No sliders. <laughs> I don't think they'll. It will, I think it will just come with the normal Joy Cons. I don't think they'll uh, change anything about the Joy Cons. You're probably right. Probably right. In fact, it, Doug Bowser himself said they have no plans to change and add a D pad to the Joy Cons. In his when he was talking on the, he wasn't saying it on the Switch Lite. Obviously, they did change that for the Switch Lite. But the Switch but Pro people was were next asking year? him if they would put a d-pad on the joy cons and he said they didn't have any plans to do that which of course maybe they do have plans to do that right but he's he the thing is like i don't switch see pro why. we're talking about something that's probably a year's or a year away from now mm -hmm. and by that point oh you know i feel like with pr talk you can never you can't go back too far when it comes to, like system stuff you know like whatever they're saying is only re relevant for a few months then after that like whatever they said doesn't matter anymore because right but I, I i think the reason they don't have a d-pad on the switch is would be the same reason they wouldn't have it on the pro like it's it's so you can can hold on <laughs> it's so you can do this and have it be buttons and that's yeah. still gonna be a thing on the pro so why would they change that you're they right might sell other joy cons separately that have a d-pad but why would you include those in the box when the point is to do this? And My can't only do that as argument well? for a D-pad and a Switch Pro is because the regular Switch is still going to be viable. The regular Switch is all about right. appealing to everyone. But the Switch Pro would be catering to a niche audience that is more core gamer centric. That gives no crap about having Joy-Cons playing in tabletop mode. Right? Like, it's just about the ideal gamer experience right and the ideal gamer experience 
a D-pad is a need. Now, one possibility is that it still has Joy-Cons, but maybe it comes packaged in with a Pro Controller, for example, right? Like, that might be one thing they may do. I and, don't think that's a good idea, just because that's significantly raising oh yeah. the amount of money they need oh to pay yeah. in towards the controller that they should be spending on the console itself. What if that makes sense. What, what, what if they had uh, two different SKUs then? Yeah, five hundred dollars comes the pro controller. I don't think they would want to go anywhere near five hundred dollars because that's probably with a PS5 and Xbox Scarlet. Just launching at. What, what, what I'm thinking is more two SKUs: one that has D-pad on the Joy-Con and one that doesn't. Oh, okay. Yeah, they could do that. I mean, especially if they're going to launch D-pad Joy-Con separately. Yeah, so I, I could see that. I'm not mm. against that, right? But I just want to say that if they did that, you'd have Switch Pro no d-pad switch pro d-pad then you have um switch right but it has 128 gigs of memory or storage space and there's a 32 gigabytes of storage space then you have switch light and then there's all these colors and that's just a lot of different skews you know that's a lot a lot yeah it is um i don't think it's impossible i mean they do have a lot of different skews for like xbox has like a bunch. They got Xbox, they got the Xbox S, they got the Xbox S2 terabyte, they got like a trillion colors, and then they have the um, Xbox One X and the Xbox One X 2 terabyte. So they have a bunch too. And you also have all digital edition. Yeah, and you have the, the Xbox set. <laughs> so it's not like <laughs> the other consoles don't also have like five SKUs. At least. What if at the end of the Switch's life cycle they have another SKU? where it's a switch that is full digital but it has a um whatchamacallit a um a sim card in there right so it runs on the internet from wherever you go right it needs a data plan but it has like a big it has big internal storage and of course you could put in micro sd cards if you wanted to uh, i mean it's possible and i don't mean like i mean like at the end of switch's life cycle i just don't think there's a super huge market for that to be honest like yeah, most you're people saying don't that want now. another phone plan. You're saying that there. now, but when Google Stadia and Xbox Cloud <laughs> take over the universe, you yeah, might, you might be happening. singing a different tune. Uh, and I, I don't want that to happen. I definitely don't the way. think either of those are going to take off. Yeah. Uh, their marketing is so trash right now. You still have to pay sixty dollars per game. Like, why is this not Netflix of of cloud game? Why is cloud gaming not Netflix for games? Right. Makes no sense. Right. So, Mandy. Um, I know that you're not excited about the Switch Lite, but how would you feel about a Switch Pro if it was announced next year and it has some of these features? Like, what would you like to see from a Switch Pro? What would make you happy? Um, just improve on what they have, honestly. What, do you care about it having a D-pad? Um, personally, no. You can always get one, a third-party D-pad if it's important, but I personally don't. Yeah, it might not be that big of a deal, right? So, I guess if I had to make a prediction, based off what you guys have said, maybe a Switch Pro won't have a D-pad in it. <clears throat> it kind of, it, it, it makes sense. Like, especially, like, if they had two SKUs and the only difference is the D-pad, you know? <laughs> That'd be kind of a dumb. It does seem, it seems a little extra. I think it'll have its own exclusive games, so. Oh, man. Kind of like That's a whole blade. other controversy. Kind of like the Xenoblade 3DS thing, I guess. Maybe. Like, I, the rumor I think was Brandon, Resident Evil Remake. I think Brandon brought a really good point the other day that may, there may be some third parties just developing exclusively for this Switch Pro. You remember that, Brandon? I think the point I brought up was, yeah, there is the possibility that a third party company may demand to put, to make a game exclusively free for pro or not put it at all i'm just confused i'm just not sure if nintendo would actually agree i think uh, like a lot of companies like activision or more, more yeah, let's be honest they're yeah. more lazy ea activision they're gonna be like it's too much work to put it on the normal switch uh, it's just pro why not they, even though it's not that much harder honestly it, it probably won't be i don't know we don't we don't know yet but it it will probably not be that much harder to have a Switch version and a Switch Pro version. So, but you know, EA is lazy. They don't want to do the obvious things that aren't even that hard. So right, they might. Yeah. I don't really take EA too seriously. But I just the thing is, like, 
If Switch Pro comes out next year, I feel like the idea of it having exclusive games won't be as bad because we'll be that much deeper into the console's life cycle. People will be a bit more okay with moving on if they feel like need to, right? But at the same time, you look at how much the Switch Lite is probably going to sell, and the regular Switch is still going to continue to sell. If the Switch Pro, which is going to be a more expensive system, which is going to be appealing to a niche eye, and so it's not going to sell nearly as much as the regular Switch or the Switch Lite, that's pretty much guaranteed, right? Just look at PS4 Pro sales compared to normal PS4, for example. Like, I find it hard to believe that a third-party company is going to want to develop just for the Switch Pro when the ability to get it on Switch Lite and regular Switch is only that much more of a stretch, you know? Um, I, I think yeah. there's a reason the new 3DS has, like, two exclusive it, 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 There may be a couple. I just don't think it's going to be a big nobody thought that amount. was a good idea. Yeah. They were like, oh, this is not working. Let's not do that. Yeah, I would prefer it if it's kind of like a PS4 Pro sort of situation where the game just looks and runs better on PS4 Pro. Yeah, I, I, that's definitely the smartest business move, I feel. It's going to be the one that's going to make consumers most happy about the device. Like, nobody's... I don't, I don't think anybody's going to complain that a more expensive Switch does games better than their current Switch, but a lot of people would complain if they say, oh, I have to buy a new more expensive Switch to play this game. Yeah. When I already have my Switch. So <clears throat> how got, how upset would you guys be if we find out Switch Pro it, like ne next year comes and there's no one else? Like, it just doesn't happen. I mean, it, that does... I, I wouldn't feel anything, honestly, because that doesn't necessarily deconfirm it. No. How do you feel? How do you feel about Metroid Prime Trilogy, Andres? You stop. <laughs> you stop. It. That's exactly how I feel no, no, about you it. Stop! How dare you? That's how I feel. Yeah. Don't you talk about that? It's I happening. wouldn't be disappointed, but I guess I wouldn't be too surprised just because it's Nintendo. Is it still? Is it wrong that I'm still silently hoping that there will be a Metroid Prime Trilogy announced this September in Nintendo Direct? I mean, at this point in time, I'll just hope for it to be announced at any kind of thing that Nintendo is at. Like, they, you can find Doug Bowser at a coffee shop, but I would hope he announces it there. Yeah, like, I'll be looking for any sort of pins. Oh, that's a Metroid <laughs> pin if you squint your eye. Yeah, hopefully. That's something Xbox actually does. Like, Phil Spencer wore a Battletoads shirt. Like, I think the, the conference before they announced Battletoads. Yeah. Remember so they when, do that, so I think the balls should definitely do that. Remember when Reggie wore that that Samus pin in 2014 when they announced Donkey Kong, um, <laughs> like having Donkey Kong <laughs> Tropical Freeze? That was great. Oh yeah. You remember? You remember on PSX when that Sony guy wore like the medieval shirt and nobody knew what the heck it was? Yeah, <laughs> that was a good moment. What's funny is that I actually am kind of interested in medieval. Like I thought, I think it'd be pretty cool to see that game. Yeah. Well, okay, so we got one more topic, guys. Um, and unless there's anything else you guys want to say on Switch Pro. No. Uh, not really. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't care that much about 4K, but I, I know it's some people want it, so... I don't even have 4K television. I, just... I have three, so I had hope. <laughs> I mean, I probably will have one. A year, I feel like a year from now, I more likely will have a 4K television, but we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. All right. Last topic, but let me check in with the chat real quick. Guys, we're on the last topic, so if there's any questions or anything you want us to bring up or answer, let me know. By the way, Brandon, I know you said you needed to go, um, so if you need to go, I won't be upset. Um, What's the last topic? I might actually leave right now. Earthbound <laughs> remake. Oh, okay. I might stay. We must right. talk about Earthbound. All right. All right. So, just to be clear, I'm not saying that there will be an Earthbound remake. Okay? What I'm, but also, I'm not saying there won't be. I'm not saying there won't be either. Um, but, <laughs> but what I am talking about is that there is this, and I don't remember the full name of the book, there's a book coming out about Iwata, and there, one of the um, Ban, Ban Kaido's developers from Namco, which is, you know, now, Mon Ban Kaido's developers are now Monolith Soft, owned by Nintendo, but they, at one point, Namco and Nintendo were planning to make an Earthbound game for the Nintendo GameCube. Now, it wasn't specified it would be a remake or not, but they were saying Earthbound, and it had two um mock-ups one of which included uh porky's mom so porky i feel like it's more likely earthbound like it meant to be like an earthbound remake on gamecube it's 2003 um what year did uh, mother 3 come out was it 2005 probably I'm not sure <laughs> i don't remember i don't like anything earthbound related i just do not remember off the top of my head 
Mother yeah. 3. Release. No, no. I don't my phone to, like move his stuff. I don't want to check out the review and never... release date. Like you know when like like new things come up and it like just shoots things upwards. Yeah, 2006 actually. So three years after that. Dang. Um. But. It took forever to make. Anyway, that. so there was there was actual concept art. Not like there's these designs. It was like claymation style for a GameCube game. Like imagine if they actually had made Earthbound on the Nintendo GameCube and it was like claymation style. How amazing would that be? I wouldn't have found it amazing back then because I didn't know anything, but looking back on it, I'd have to play it. Now, here's the thing. They talked about it then. They were open to the idea. There was, there was talks for it. There was concept art for it. And we know that there's this whole, this is all this porky business about him being missing from Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. And I know I'm really picking at straws here. But what if, you know, what if it is in the cards that we could get an Earthbound remake, right? Like, yes, having an, ex an expanded story wouldn't work, but technically Etoy did at one point, uh, was he was suggesting that Iwata could come up with a story for this Earthbound game on GameCube. So maybe, you know, it's not so much of a stretch to think that someday we could see another Earthbound game, be it a remake or a reimagining on the Switch or a future system. And what if it's based off either like a Link's Week Awakening or Reimagining style or an Octopath Traveler kind of style? Like, how amazing would that be? <laughs> uh, I guess you're not. No? Is that no? Is that I a yes? I feel like the answer has to be that, that, yes. That's a, that's, a, that's a hell yeah. Ah. <laughs> okay. I would be. I, I'm not. I've I've not been a huge Earthbound fan for a long time. You'll become one. I've. No, I I really like the original game now. I didn't obviously play it back when it was new, and I like just found out like how good it really was, like probably a year or two ago. But now that I'm like I like really like the original game, I would love a, a remake of it. And it's not like. The creator said he didn't want to make any more games or he didn't want to add on to that story, but he didn't really necessarily say that they couldn't remake older games. Yeah. With the, I don't think it'd be a reimagining. I think it'd be just a remake. Like, like Link's, Link's Awakening. Awakening. That'd yeah. be amazing. That'd be perfect. I think um, the original mother needs it desperately. Um, Earthbound on the Super Nintendo has aged better than the, than the original, mm -hmm. um, but it, I'd still think it would be great to have remake oh the the original i tried the i tried playing the original on the on the wii u man i love earthbound and i love Mother 3 but the original just hasn't aged well at all in my opinion like if you like if you it's it's a very plain rpg in my opinion yeah no i i, I understand that um which is why i think it deserves to be remade uh for sure so there's no, like, like I said, there's no, like, hard information you're saying, hey, it's gonna get remade, guys, totally happening. But, like, there's, there's less evidence for a bat, for, um, a Mother 3 or any sort of Earthbound remake than there is for a new Banjo-Kazooie game. Which there isn't much for either. There's a small, there's some, some maybe soft evidence for a new Banjo-Kazooie game, but it's very soft. Here uh, we go. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm joking. You know what? I'm not even gonna make fun of you anymore. You shut my mouth, and, and I respect that, man. I respect it. But I mean, but the the three of I know Shifty had the I know Shifty was knew his stuff, and Andres was just so into it, and Brandon, and when E3 came by, I got my mouth shut. So there you go. Respect. <laughs> respect. <laughs> yeah. But I I would be hyped as hell for a remake. I have never actually uh, experienced the original or Mother Three, so I want to, <laughs> and it'd be great for a remake. Cause I, I did, I like you're saying it, it. Apparently, a lot of people don't think it aged well. Yeah. That, go on. All, I was gonna say I've only really played the original game, so I mean not the original. I mean um, Earthbound, not Mother One or whatever. Right. It's but I've yeah, I've only played that one. I didn't even finish it either. Uh, I liked what I've played, but I just didn't, I just didn't finish it. So, so I guess like a remake would give me a good excuse to do, to do that, to finish like, and mm -hmm. I could play a game. 
actually complete an Earthbound game, <laughs> but, but I, I I have like very little knowledge of the games themselves, and I only hear good things, so I should get back to it. But I don't own a Wii U anymore, so I don't want to, uh, you know, yeah. do that <laughs> and go to the Wii U. <laughs> yeah, get a Super Nintendo Classic. Oh yeah, that's true. I actually do own that. No, the, the, the Earthbound's well. on there, baby. It's on the 3DS. Yeah, that too. Oh man. I, I, I don't own it on 3DS though, but I since I do have a Super Nintendo Classic, I could like you can play it because since yeah. you already have it, you don't have to pay any money. But you know the thing is that I feel any game with that kind of style, like the Super Nintendo RPGs, all of them would benefit from looking like Octopath Traveler. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. Yes. Can you imagine Chrono Trigger? Oh God. Oh. Final Fantasy Six. Yeah. Yeah. That made yes. it. They looking they would oh my goodness and we're actually getting a couple remakes for um uh, on the switch for other other games like um Kaiser dragoon and there's what that secret of mana game as well right is it is a secret of mana that's getting uh, remade trials of mana trials of mana like those are two old games that are getting remakes on the switch and they're both coming really soon yeah so, i mean we're in we're, we're in an age of remakes like that's another thing that kind of bodes well for any sort of classic style game that has a huge fan base or like it's a cult classic like earthbound has a shot like nintendo might do that maybe you know um maybe it is kind of like an eventuality like look at Link's awakening i feel like and correct i mean this is obviously subjective but i feel like the desire for a Link's awakening remake is similar to an earthbound remake you guys do you guys agree with that or disagree with that uh when you say that, do you mean the idea of taking like a, like an old game that hasn't aged well and just kind of modernizing it, or? Because when I look at Link's Awakening, I think of something like Metroid: Samus Returns, where they took Metroid Two and Metroid Two was kind of a, it wasn't a bad game for its time, but I mean, if you go back to it now, it's very hard to understand where you're going because there's no map or there's no. Well, they, yeah, map. Nintendo did that for yeah. That's an interesting point you brought up. Metroid Two, they did it for Metroid Two, they did it for Link's Awakening, but those are Game Boy games. Um, Earthbound was a Super Nintendo game. I don't think Link's Awakening really aged badly. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. I've never played it. I've watched other people play it. It seemed fine. Maybe somebody who's actually played it could talk more on that. But it, it didn't seem like it aged poorly. I mean, I've played it from back when it first released. It was actually my first portable Zelda. But I would agree that it hasn't really aged that poorly. But I'm sure there's probably people at Nintendo who feel the opposite. You know, maybe they felt that, oh, this game would be perfect to be remade because it look just look at it. Maybe they do that right. and they just go, that's enough for us. And then, yeah, they... I, I think more it was just they had a good idea for the remake and the remade style more than it was like, this game doesn't really play good anymore. Let's remake it so people can actually. Also, apparently it's like really hard to obtain the actual like there's not many ways to play it these days no. um, in official means. So I. Yeah. Th I remember them talking about that at the treehouse, I think. That was one of the reasons they remade it. I yeah. think. And that would go against Earthbound because we can play it on Super Nintendo. And it was also that both all, both Mother 1 and 2 were brought to or Wii U. Goes against it a little I bit. Think... Link's Awakening is on something. It's just not on... It's on 3DS, I think. Right. I think it's the colored uh, version. The deluxe version. The DX version. Yeah. yeah. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's on it because I remember playing the uh, the Oracle games on there. Hmm. So I would imagine it would probably be on there too. Yeah. Apparently, according to Computer Robots, um, myself, Brandon, and the podcast Ojo want Tom and Jerry in Smash. There you go. Yeah, they could be an echo for Banjo Kazooie. I don't. I don't want Tom and Jerry. I want like the pit bull from Tom and Jerry. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, the dog. Yeah. That's the one I want. Leghorn, please. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, Mastermind brought up Oracle of Ages and Seasons. Oh, Sabbath did. I never played those. Yeah, Oracle of Ages and Seasons. Uh, yeah, Sabbath Stewart brought that up first of, of them being remade after Link's Awakening. That'd be amazing too. Bro, those games are awesome. You never yeah. played them? I've never played them. I didn't have a Game Boy. So oh man. I didn't do a slight. I played Game Boy, but I didn't have that game. Yeah, Christian Baker is saying that Link's Awakening is fine. The only thing is that you have to keep switching items, which you don't have to really do in um, right. Remake, right? They, they adjusted that. So, 
there are little things that will benefit. I mean, any game that's remade has a chance to be improved upon, modernized, right? So, but I, I think Earthbound fans, we need a game. We need a game. Come on, Scarce for the free. Make it happen. Like it, it is. It there. There is no modern Earthbound. There's nothing, right? There's no like. It's a series that's just untapped by Nintendo. You know, um, like at least with Kid Icarus, there was a there was a 3DS game, right? At least we got that. Do you count F Zero on GameCube a modern game? No, <laughs> no, because I bet like a third of the people in this chat were born after it came out. That just makes me depressed, man. GameCube, <laughs> Game, GameCube oh. uh, F Zero GX came out 2003. We're in 2019. That means Mother had a more recent game than F Zero. Oh, That's God. also true. That's terrible. That boggles my mind. Well, there might be a Game Boy game that came out like 2004 or something, but it it, it actually. I'm gonna look that up. It might have come out the same year as GX. Uh, GX was great. GX was the best. It's the best racing franchise of all time. Yeah, uh, the kid uh, was uh, racing and it came out in 2004. Still, Mother uh, came out in 2006. So, yeah. Yeah. Hopefully we get something. We've been getting a lot of good games. There's only more to come in the future. Maybe some of them will be playable on the Switch Pro. We'll see. Hopefully not exclusively though. Hopefully it's like all of them. Imagine to just have Mother 3 remake and F new F-Zero held hostage on Switch Stop. Pro. Stop! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> So the internet would melt. The servers would straight melt. <laughs> Everything oh, no. Nintendo, all Nintendo, mm. Nintendo America, and even Nintendo, like it doesn't matter. Nintendo Europe, Nintendo Japan, they'd all be on fire. What if, what if that's their plan? Or Russia would be on fire. <clears throat> what if they wait to localize these big hitters, right? <laughs> When they have, when they see that they're struggling a little bit, and they go, "Wait, let's play the trump card." That's why you got Earthbound Beginnings on Wii U. Yes. <laughs> they're just waiting for a trump rainy card. day. They're just waiting for that time they need that trump card, and they just go, "Wait, I got it." What if Breath of the Wild Two has been done for like ever? I <laughs> doubt that that's even possible. You don't know that. Conspiracy hour. What if Breath of the Wild one was done like in 2015, but they knew the Wii was dead, so they just kept it in a canister for two and a half years? <laughs> oh, no, that's not true. No, it's not. Um, <laughs> what about Pikmin 4 though? That thing. Uh, who knows? We uh, don't know. We don't know. Um, Juzzy added me. Earthbound is technically modern theme wise. Let's not get into that, Samantha. Yeah. Yeah, let's not get into to that. Um, but Semantics. So anyway, I think we're pretty much at the natural end for this discussion, guys. I feel like the chat is fairly active, but uh, Brandon has to go. It's getting late. Any final points you guys want to make? Uh, no, I, I think I said everything I want to say. Uh, let's get a new F-Zero. That's all. Yeah. Hashtag let's, bring back S0. Let's get all that thing that Shifty was saying we should get. <laughs> all right. Um, Man, you got any, any, anything you want to sort of shout out about your channel or anything of, of that nature? Uh, you can find me at Mandy Plays, or you can follow me on Twitter. Yeah. Well, you can find me uh, at Mandy Lee Plays, and you can follow me on Twitter at Mandy Lee Plays. It's the same thing, just one with out the ad. Yep. You can find her there. Shifty. Um, it's it's. I am Shifty, right? I am Shifty on YouTube, but uh, Twitter wouldn't let me have that, so Shifty is me on Twitter. Yeah, it's so. confusing. Whenever I'm trying to add you, yeah. it's, it's, uh, I don't know it's what to weird. do. If, if Twitter let me have a hostile takeover of that handle, I would take it. Well, not impossible. <laughs> not impossible. Yeah. All right, and Ray, what about you? I think you saw you got like what, like fourteen thousand subscribers on the podcast dojo recently. Yeah, fourteen thousand subscribers. But you know what? I'm very excited about the fact that I'm going to start working on my other channel again. I'm Ready actually working on a video. Yeah, I'm actually working on a video right now. So there you go. Cool. Very nice, man. Look, I know we had a bit of a, our arguments earlier, but I just want to say 
I appreciate each and every one of you. Except for Brandon. <laughs> yeah, Brandon. <laughs> of course it's me. I hate you, Brandon. Ah. His soul is black. <laughs> yes. Now, I also want I also want to say that um Brandon and I have been like neck and neck subscriber wise for a while. We've been like growing together. He's like he's cool. I like him. We're <laughs> cool. It yeah. just sounded like you had nothing else to say, so you just went, hey, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a he's okay. He's all right. It, it, it's actually more like I didn't want to say anything sappy and weird, so I cut it off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That that's actually what it was. But hey, bro, you know we homies. Honestly, after this discussion, uh, just kind of thinking about everything we talked about, I, I feel like it's actually, we, we, we covered all. We talked about Luigi's Mansion 3, which I am hyped for. We talked about Super Mo We're getting a Super Monkey Ball game. Come on. I am, like, for me, that brings me joy. Like, yo, we were talking about there's no F Zero, there's no Earthbound. We're getting Super Monkey Ball, though. That's awesome. Yeah. And I mentioned there's, there's, there's a Trials of Mana remake happening. There is a Panzer Dragoon re remake happening. Those are both coming to Switch. That has me hyped as well. Right, I think the Switch Lite is cute, but I'm not gonna buy it. But I, I kind of just like that it exists as a Nintendo fan. Seeing how it looks, looks really cool. Like I'm excited for that. And you know like, you want that Pokemon one. I do you know it. Um, but I probably won't buy it because there's all these amazing 3DS Pokemon 3DSs. And I didn't buy those either. So you know, money, money's a thing. Um, I'll shut up then. Yeah, <laughs> I want it though. I do. But it, it just looks cool to me, and like. Fire Emblem. I did not think I was going to be this hyped for that game, but after seeing the bosses and all the things you can do in the game, I'm excited. Bro, and... I'm waiting for that collector's edition to get to my house. Yeah. And then there's a Switch Pro, which may or may not happen. I hope it happens. I want it. <laughs> and then just the premise that Earthbound Remake, even though it's not like super, super likely, I feel like with the news that there was an Earthbound plan for GameCube at one point, it kind of... It gives me hope, right? You see the, those pieces of concept art, this idea of a claymation-style Earthbound game. That just sounds magical to me. Someone's playing Breath of the Wild. <laughs> Who's playing Breath of the Wild? I am. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> and Breath of the Wild 2 is coming. You haven't played Breath of the Wild until you collect all 900 Koroks like I did and suffer. Like oh, I God. Did. Nobody <laughs> cares. Oh, my God. I will not be a true... That's really hard. I might do it eventually, but that's gonna take a while. But anyways, everyone, I'm just a little hyped thinking about all this stuff. I'm very excited. Thank you so much for listening and watching, everyone. Check out everyone. I am Shifty, right? Mandy Lee plays. What about Nintendo? The Podcast Dojo and Dirty Cabana. Remember all of that. Look them up if you haven't seen them. Check out their channels. And I'll see you guys all really soon. Have a great one. Bye guys. Later. Thank you and bye. Peace. Bye.